T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and... Welcome, everybody. We are your hosts, Rock and Mr. Magic. Unique DNA. This is the Original Jeek Podcast. Gang. I don't see no competition in my face. Oh, yeah. what you, yeah. If we do, then we just move them out the way. I don't even need no money in my face. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me the money when I finish with the gang. gang. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. To the original Jeep podcast, I am your host, Rock and Mr. Magic, and Unique DNA, and we are back, y'all. It's been too long; life has been wild, <laughs> but we are here, <laughs> and we are going to give you some more dope content to rock to. So, the only thing that's really on our minds, and a lot has gone down since we last had the episode, and for that, we do apologize. I mean, we've got. NBA champions and first time we got first time NHL champions. We got crazy stuff coming out of <laughs> Hollywood. But the main thing on our minds is Marvel Phase Four. Yeah. Hall of H. <laughs> Marvel just killed San Diego Comic Con, which is the OG of Comic Cons, if you do not know. And their panel just they they blew up the entire nothing else matters out of this year's SDCC than what Marvel had to say. Yeah. Like, no, no one's talking about anything else. No. Was there even a Comic-Con is what I'm starting to wonder. <laughs> or was it just a Marvel announcement? Or not just a Marvel announcement. <laughs> real. They have, that's, yeah, Marvel has taken over SDCC, for real, for real. WDCC. It is like the WDCC of, uh... <laughs> you know, for them, for real. Like, that's what everybody was waiting for. <laughs> to see what Marvel was going to say. Like the new that's iPhone true. announcement for, for Marvel. Right? All right now you all paid all this money. You traveled here. You met a couple people. Now, for what you really came here for, yeah. Marvel's announcement. Yeah. And what an announcement, an announcements they made. So if you haven't gotten the lineup of, of Phase 4, don't understand the phases that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has gone in, we are currently... Um, at the beginning of Phase 4, uh, Avengers Endgame ended Phase 3. So we are in a transitionary period here. Yes. And we are going to just gonna go in order as far as the announcements. Can we talk Spider-Man real quick before? Did we can talk Sp Spider-Man. Yeah, because okay. even though it's technically still Sony um, and Marvel product, yeah, we can talk Spider-Man. Go ahead. Well, I'm just... Because, I mean, that was like the... That was a, that was a real end cap to to phase three right like spider-man so okay big country and i were having this discussion and we were talking about spider-man because he he so i mean I, I guess i'll leave trailer talk for him to give his thoughts but his main thought was just like way too much dialogue not enough action it felt like sort of an amazing spider-man spider-man three type of movie like really? not, the, not the marvel like that we expected from the first one, you know, from Homecoming. Well, uh, you see, I kind of feel him on that because Homecoming was, it was good. Right. But it, it was. <laughs> so that, so that was, this is what's just, leading, like I see exactly where you're going and this is what's leading into my conversation, right? So we were talking okay. about, and like, of course, we were both hype about it. And if I didn't mention, we work together now, so um, no, okay, to, cool. We get to talk about this stuff a lot more. <laughs> so uh, we were at work and we were talking about it, and um, yeah. So he was like, he went to BlurCon. I didn't get to go. Well, we are eternally all. We are all jealous. <laughs> yes, I'm very, I'm very hurt about that. But um, yeah. So he came back, and it, it was like we were like, well, I was like, well, since you're going to BlurCon, I'm going to see Spider Man. You can see it on your own time. We'll talk about it when you get back. So he saw it while he was out there. Uh, I saw it on the same weekend. And then we were talking about it when he got back. And then I was like, so what'd you think before I get my thoughts? And then that's when he was like, yeah, it definitely was way too much, you know, dialogue, not enough action. Um, like he was like, yeah, it just felt like, he was like, I was a little, I was a little disappointed. But then he was like, you know, I thought, you know, would it be in a Marvel movie now? Like this is going to be it. So then I was like, do you think that Homecoming was good or great because it was 
just because it was like, okay, finally Spider-Man's back with the Marvel family, or was it actually a good movie? And then he was like, now that you mentioned it, I need to go back and watch it because I, I'm starting to wonder if it was really like the hype was really off of just Spider-Man's back with the Marvel family. It's going to be, a, you know, a co- cohesive universe now. Right. Or was it just a good movie? And then I, I just happened to be watching it that day. And I was like, you know what? Actually, in my opinion, like it wasn't that great of a movie. Like, it's so what it was hyped up to be? Yeah, Homecoming. So then I was like, it, it, it flowed well with, if you watch them back to back, mm-hmm. like it flows well with Far From Home, but it's like, I saw a lot of the same elements in, the, in Homecoming too, like with the dialogue and stuff like that. And I was like, I think it was just the hype of like, it's back with Marvel. It's part of the Marvel universe now. And like, of course, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is in it a lot, <laughs> more than I actually realized. And like, so that, I think that was really the hype. Like, it wasn't really that great of a Spider-Man movie. I'm like, I think, I'm starting to think that Spider-Man just can't be done in a cinematic way. Like, I don't know, I guess, because maybe it's so outrageous of, like, a teenage boy becoming this superhero spider, you know, and gets bit by the reactive spider. Like, and then his, the villains of Spider-Man aren't really, you know, they're so outlandish and, like, (laughs) when you really think about it, right? Like, all, all comic book villains are outlandish, but I mean, I mean, I know, but like, it's like it's harder to do them in a, like a real life sort of CG way. No, see, you um, know, I don't no, know. It was it was just something no, I was thinking about. Like, we were no, no. I, I, I'm glad you said that. One, I, the first reason I'm really glad you said that, and I'm going to say Big Country now for seeing it too. I'm not, <laughs> no, because I'm not the only one now. Because <laughs> because everyone everyone likes to, everyone likes to say they all know who y'all are. Everyone likes to say that I'm a hater or that um, I'm always, you know, uh, such a negative critic. I'm objective, darn it. So, right. <laughs> I did not see Homecoming when it dropped. I actually just saw Homecoming like two weeks ago okay. for the first time. Because I, if, if you're a fan, if you're a fan of Cheat Nation, support us. Use our Fandango links to support us. I use our Fandango link, bought myself some movie tickets, and got. <laughs> Five dollars Fandango Now credit, which I used to watch Spider Man Homecoming before I went to see Far From Home. So I just saw Homecoming. So all the hype that was coming into the movie for the theaters, all that I did not have when I finally watched the movie. Right. And I have to agree, there was way too much dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, I also did not, part of the thing with Spider Man that's so dope for me, and I still to this day say that. Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire is the best Spider-Man movie. And he said the was, same thing. Because it was closest to the book. Right. The only thing that really was really different from the books was the fact that they had the web shooter be a part of the mutation instead of a creation he made. Right. But everything else was virtually perfect. Yeah. Hey, oh, I can't say virtually perfect. Because Kirsten it, it Dunst's, flaws too, Kirsten but... Dunst's Mary Jane was trash. But... Yeah. Elite. I mean, she did okay. She wasn't terrible. I wouldn't say she was trash. I'd say she was mediocre. <laughs> okay, she was a step above trash. She was mediocre. Oh, I'll give you mediocre. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm excited for this because Tom Holland carries these films because yes. he is a great Peter and he's a great Spider-Man. Where Toby was a great Peter and a poor Spider-Man, and Garfield was a horrific Peter and a good Spider-Man. Right. So we got balance in Holland. Yeah. But the story really, I mean, it, it does Peter Parker slash Spider Man a disservice because he was a genius. He's a genius level character. Having him come up with his own spider, um, his web shoes is great. But taking everything else away from him, having his suit be, you know, cheap or whatever, not having him invent his own spider tracers, which I'm glad they finally showed. Yeah. But not having him invent his own, having this, you know, suits created by all these suits created by Stark, it, that makes him like Iron Man Jr. with spider powers, and that's not Spider Man, right? Um, and there was way too much, to- too much talking, oh my God, so <laughs> much talking. I'm like, yo, like, really, like he's a loner, and his talking should be with Aunt May, which 
I, I love Marissa Tomei, but I can't stand the fact that he calls her May all the time. Right. Like, yo, that's your aunt who's raising you after your uncle died. You don't call her May. You all ain't on no first name basis. I know I'm old school in that as a parent, but come I, that, that just rubs me the wrong way. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to be open-minded, new universe and all that. Okay, now May's attractive, cool. Um, but just so much, so much talking. Just, just the, the, the unnecessary thing about, you know, the dude saying how May's hot in Spanish. And he's like, yo, so how's your daughter in Spanish? Like, funny, <laughs> but not necessary. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? Because if you're getting, if you're showing how smart this kid is, then why is he smart enough to make his own stuff? Right. You know he's supposed to be a genius. Right. Um, I'll give this one. He's got great taste in women. Um, between the the girl that played his crush, the crush, and then Zendaya, who yeah. who was wasted, completely wasted in that film. Wasted yeah, I was disappointed. Out. I was like, oh man. All, all, like, how are we supposed to like her? All she <laughs> did was be grumpy, flick people off, and draw mean caricatures of them throughout the entire movie. Yeah, like, yeah. you wasted her presence. Why have her there if you're gonna waste her? Yeah, that makes yeah. no sense. And then they figure, and then her figuring out that he was Spider Man. Yeah, but that was like she happened to luck upon that. That was just yeah, yeah, yeah. The best thing, the best thing about that film, what saved that film, Tom Holland's performance and Michael Keaton's performance, because Michael Keaton has been the best Spider Man villain. Michael Keaton's just freaking great, you know. It's <laughs> Michael Keaton. That conversation they have in the car, that was <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That, that was, was a good. great, great f- scene they shot. Um, yeah. And I think actually, you mentioned the outlandishness of the villains. They did a good job setting him up on instead of that. Team, to me, that's kind of almost like an improvement as far as how he became the vulture. Instead of having him be another, you know, rich person, and obviously, you know, we know in the comic books. Right story, but having him become the vulture that way was pretty freaking cool. That was good, that and was the good. way they, they tied Shocker into it Shocker was also was, pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, I can dig this change to the story, it also tied to the Avengers movie. So I'm like, okay, I, I'm with that. That makes sense. Now, how they had this particular genius who could figure out the alien tech enough to merge with our tech, okay, that's a bit far fetched, but hey, whatever. It's a comic book movie. Yeah. Um, the dialogue involving Keaton fantastic um and the action scene dialogue was also great all the other dialogue was tedious and boring mm-hmm. all the calls to happy like come on like <laughs> we, we get being ignored but yeah. like, you didn't have to keep you know beating the dead horse with that yeah um it just it, it could have been so much better um and again wasting zendaya just that uh, I'm, I'm i'm michelle but they call me MJ. Really? Just how about they call you Michelle? Because there's only one MJ in Spider Man, and that's right. Mary Jane Watson. Like, right? Yeah. Well, like, why even do that? Like, why even like play up this like character who's she's supposed to be Mary Jane, but she's not Mary Jane. She's different. She like what? Like, it doesn't even make sense, really. In the in the scheme of Spider Man, like, it's like, what's the point? And that was that was one of the things that like frustrated me too. Like sort of like you know they did that little drop at the end. Like oh yeah, call me MJ. And I was just like, wait what? Like <laughs> like I walked out of the theater like huh? Like okay, yeah. like where are we going with this? And then you know going into Far From Home, and it's like okay, they're really gonna play this MJ thing up to the point like he's in love with her and he's got this huge crush on her and mm-hmm. you know this. He's, they're going away and they're going to have this, you know, in his mind, he's got the plan, right? Right. And it was like, like, what, like, what are we doing? It, like, does, it doesn't make sense. And if she's yeah. not, if she's not supposed to replace MJ in our minds, it's not, then, then don't call her MJ. Right. And it's like, if she's supposed to be this fresh character, she's supposed to be. really is just really trying to make her replace MJ. Like, okay. Yeah. She's but then, but like, then they said he, she's supposed to be unique. She's supposed right. to be her own character. Well, she's, she's her own character. Don't call her MJ. <laughs> yeah, you totally could have just introduced somebody else. You could have called her Shelly. You could yeah. call you. You could have given you know the the half black, half Hispanic woman a Hispanic name. Right. Like just introduce you, a totally new character. Yeah, because that's because that's what they said she's supposed to be. Right. Like, yeah. 
So that was that 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 irritated me through the whole movie because it was like, okay, now we're going into homecoming. I mean, far from home, and it's like she's supposed to be this new character, but she's playing the MJ role to the t- like with her figuring out that he's Spider Man, and then yep. to, like him being in love with her, and like then like all the you know all this stuff, and it's just like, why, why, like it, right, exactly, like okay, you, could you not have figured this out in the first one, and then to just make her mar- MJ, make her the real MJ, make her Mary Jane Watson from the beginning, right? Like it made no sense to me. I thought you know if you, I don't like the idea of a new character. I like the idea of a new love interest. I did too, but if you're gonna play this, <laughs> you're gonna play this game. Even if they're gonna have her almost do everything that Mary Jane did. Okay, I can see that it happening, but calling her MJ just, it's just like it convolutes slap. everything. Yeah. And then and it ended the movie on a, on a bad note because now, like you, your reaction was minor. I'm like, bro, really? This is where we're going to go with this? I felt like it was. In a sense, it was fan service, right? It was like, we're not going to have MJ in there, like, but we're going to give you some, This is our little, like, we're going to give you something. Like, here, here, take this. <laughs> right? Like, we're not going to have the real MJ, but here, you can have them. We'll, I, we'll, I, I would have rather... Odd, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> like, here you go. All, of all the women Spider-Man has, has macked to and gotten with or had flings with, they could have picked a myriad of other women they could have right. used instead of alluding to MJ or, or Gwen. Like, it, right. but, that was, to me, that was really, really poor writing there. But yeah. And you know. then just the, the whole, like, I don't know, like the whole homecoming, I mean, Far From Home was just like, I was just like, man, like, where are we going with this? Like, even, okay, the nod to the multiverse. And then like, actually, there's no real mer- multiverse. Like, what was the point of that? Like, and then, the, and then for them to come out, and I mean, we'll talk about that with the whole all of the Phase Four announcements. But then, but then them to come out and say like, "Yeah, we're going to introduce the multiverse, but it's going to be Doctor Strange." But you already did it, right? <laughs> like, what was the point? <laughs> like, if you just just kept it going, like, I don't. I mean, I get like from the character's perspective, like you know, with the whole Ray Mysterio and <laughs> you just you know. said Ray Mysterio. <laughs> But it was just like it was, did, 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 was, I, I'm I'm missing the part where Jake Gyllenhaal went booyaka booyaka six one nine. But I feel you like the whole multiverse thing was like, hey, we're gonna tease it, uh, then we're gonna take it away, then we're gonna tease it again, and now we're gonna confirm it. It's like well, really, just make up your mind. Like we know there's a multiverse. Yeah. And by now, anyone that's been watching through all these phases should know and understand there's a multiverse. So yeah. yeah. And yeah, it was. It was just. Oh, I've never seen so much dialogue in a Spider-Man movie, yeah. or especially with the villains. Like, you know, him, him, and you know, Mysterio having this conversation. Like, really? He's yeah. never taught. I mean, I've got books where he said five words, Mysterio, and <laughs> half of that was him making a joke. Uh, <laughs> right. He's not like. I, I I didn't understand that at all. I I mean, like I liked I I kind of liked the way they were going with Mysterio, right? Like it was different. Sort of like, but, and then there was another thing, that was another thing I brought up with Country about it. That was like, okay, so basically, so from here on out, Spider-Man is going to replace Iron Man in every sense, every aspect of phase four and five, right? Like, it's just going to be like, okay, we gave you, because I I was like, even if you look, you kind of look at the way that Iron Man one, two, and three was structured and the way that kind of structuring Spider-Man it's sort of lining up the same, right? Like with like the end of Iron Man one, where like he like Tony Stark came out and said like I'm Iron Man, and then right. like the, the Far From Home, and it's like oh by the way we're gonna drop this bomb that Peter Parker is Spider Man, right? right? It's like <gasps> right, but it's like we've done this before, people. Like yeah, okay, now instead of instead of him doing it himself, you know, the Civil War, right? <laughs> yeah, like. It was just like, it's just like everybody, like, it's like they're trying to line him up. And then the whole point of like Far From Home was like, I'm not Iron Man. I'm not Iron Man. I can't be the next Iron Man. I can't be the next Iron Man. Oh, but I'm going to basically do everything that Iron Man did right. in the last three, mo- in the all three Iron Man movies. And like, you know, even down to like building a new suit. And like, mm-hmm. it's just like, what are we doing? And I was like, I was just like, like, if Spider Man's going to be his own, I mean, I get that Peter Parker followed a lot of of 
of um, Tony Stark's, you know, footsteps in the books and stuff like that. You know, Parker Industries, yes, Stark right. Industries and all that. But, you know, and he was his mentor and all that stuff. But it was just like, what are we doing? You know, like, you don't have to make it so obvious. Right. Because it's not that obvious in the books. No. You know, like, and, and, and any, any hardcore fan is going to tell you, and even if you're not a hardcore fan, you pick up any of the latest Spider-Man books you're going to know, right? Like, you're going to know, and that's supposed to be the draw, right? It's supposed to draw these new fans into the into the books and everything else. Right. So it's like, why are we, like, forcing this? Like, it feels like they're forcing it, and I was just like, it just felt like, and I was telling, that's what I was telling country last week or the week before. Like, I was just like, it feels like they're just forcing him into this role to, like, because everybody's, uh, you know, like, well, what are we going to do now without Robbie Downey Jr.? And yeah, that, that, that's Tony exactly. Stark. Yeah, so, that's it. Because and they're, they're forcing it because they they know they're not going to get him back or they figure they can't afford to bring him back. Right. Um, because, you know, what, $75 million he made in the last two movies each? Like, yeah. you know, can, a, you, it's like, can you afford him? <laughs> yeah, same. But like, can you? It's like you can't afford the guy, um, or how much is he going to demand for the next film? You know, um, and but again, to me, I mean, hey, if, if you make another how many billions of dollars off the film, yeah, I mean, then, sure, then, yeah. then then pay the guy a hundred million, then right? You know, like, you but know, it's just like like the, it was almost like from from my perspective, I was like, it looks like they're trying to they're they're trying to set up a new face of Marvel. Right, like Robbie Downer Jr. was the face of Marvel for so long in the last 10 years, right? 10 plus yeah. years. And exactly. it's like, okay, okay, we killed them, right? Now what? <laughs> we got to we gotta have somebody step up. I mean, they, they kind of blew it with Cap. They blew it with, you know, oh, anybody else that could step up in Endgame because they basically eviscerated everybody in Avengers. Pretty much. <laughs> like everybody that mattered anyway. Like nobody really cared about Hawkeye. Um, <laughs> so that's, just, like, that's just, just Jeremy Renner. That's why. <laughs> but I mean, like you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love, I love Sam Wilson. I love you know um, Bucky. But I mean, like, can they carry a cinematic universe? Probably not. Um, well, they're 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 B characters. They're B right. characters. Yeah, you can't have B and C characters be your face. Right. And I understand the push to make Spider Man the face because he's Spider-Man young. Is the he's face of Marvel comics. Right. Yeah, and you can, and he's young, right? Tom Holland's what now, twenty, twenty one, something like that. Twenty one, twenty two, something. Yeah, like, that. like I mean, you can run him for a long time. I mean, until he becomes too expensive again, you know, like 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 uh, Robert Downey Jr. But I mean, as far as like longevity as a character, like I mean, he can probably go all the way into his thirties as long as you can afford him, you know. Which and, would be great because you could tell the older Spider Man stories as far as his maturity and marriage and, right. and all that, and so. Yeah. I mean, I get why they're trying to push it, but I'm just like, like, why are you forcing it? You didn't have to force it. Like, everybody was excited about Spider-Man, clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everybody's excited about Spider-Man returning back to Marvel, you know, and, or, or, and and now with the Fox deal and all that stuff. Like, I mean, you don't have to push this. Like, you don't have to throw it in our face. Like, yes, he's the next Iron Man. He's the next face of Marvel. Like, it's already known. He was one of the he's even one of the original characters of Marvel. Everybody knew that at some point he's gonna become the face of Marvel in in the cinematic universe. It only makes exactly. sense. So like, why force it? And then, like I said, all the dialogue was just. I was just like, man, this movie could have been like an hour and a half shorter <laughs> without all the dialogue all the talking. Yes, right. Like, or like, it was just so. And then the action. I mean, the action when it was action was good. Yes, but there was times where it was like it was all over the place. Where I was just like, I mean, I was following it, but I'm just like, it's just all over the place. Like there it, was, you can't the cuts really the on cuts, the characters. Yeah, yeah, the cuts are so. That's one thing I I that's my biggest complaint about the action in the MCU are all the are all the cuts in the fight scenes. It's like, I know you I mean come on, you can't chop it up this bad. I can't follow it properly if you cut it up this bad. Yeah. It's like, like you look at it, and you're like, how did he get over there? He was just, right. He was. Like, <laughs> wait, I mean, I know he's Spider Man and stuff, but like, what? Like, you 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 showed a shot of him over here, and then you cut to him swinging over here, and you're like, what? Where, where, where did he get there? 
Yeah. Right? Like, it makes no sense, but, I mean... Or, or, or they'll just have, you know, what, what's his AI? They'll have Karen say, oh, yes, you have a built-in teleporter now. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it just, it was just like, oh, come on. And, you know, even with all that stuff, I was like, man, this is like, he is really the new... Like, they are really trying to push this Iron Man thing hard and heavy. And it's like, let him be his own character. Yes. And, it, like, I almost felt like, I felt like, you know, like like Peter felt in the movie. Like, I'm like, no, he's not Iron Man. Let him be Spider-Man. Like, he used the, the, the AI way too much. He used, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I was glad that they, like, they kind of, they only used the Iron Spider suit for, like, the first little half or whatever. Right. Not even, like, the first, like, quarter. You know, because I was just like, it just makes no sense. Like, you guys are really pushing this Iron Man thing way too hard. And, um, but yeah, so, I mean, I think we talked enough about Spider-Man. But yeah, that was my thoughts on it. And I was like, was it a good, I, like, I feel like Endgame should have just been the end to Phase 3. Um, rather than, like, make Homecoming. I mean, Far, Far from, from Home. home. Yeah. Because it was just like, what, like, you held off. With all these announcements and everything, because it's like we got to do Far From Home first because we have to end out, you know, Phase Three, and it was like, but did it really end? It didn't really end out Phase Three. Like, it, it, there was no closure in there that I didn't get from Endgame, other than right. that. It, 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 it's really dead. That was the only thing yeah. that I really I got from it. It, it, it leaves it leaves more questions you know, <laughs> unanswered than answered. Yeah, and it really should have just been a transition film. It should be a bridge film. Yeah. It should be bridging the end of phase three and tying into the beginning yeah. of phase four. So you you totally could have just been like, you know what, guys, like this is the start of phase four. And because of that, now we can introduce all this new stuff, right? Right. Like, I mean, I get it. They started filming before Endgame and all that. But like, that was your opportunity. If you're going to say that, all right, this is capping off phase three, then like, other than the fake multiverse that you in introduced, but sort of introduced, then like then you retconned it <laughs> within the same movie. <laughs> like, like you know, it's like you could have introduced the multiverse. You could have introduced the Eternals. You could have introduced like all this stuff that which we're gonna talk about. Like you could have introduced some of that. You could have introduced you know, like you even if you didn't introduce it, you could have mentioned it. Like for me, the way to do the fake multiverse would have been to be like, okay, Mysterio had me believing in this multiverse. Right. And what really was happening is that it's not that there's not a multiverse, it's right. that he got me believing in the raw multiverse. Exactly. And then you could have had, you know, he you know, he could have been, you know, at a computer at near the at the you know end or you know doing some type of search to confirm theories or something. And you you could have had a pop up, you know, Eternals, Shang Chi you know, right. just you know, just there for the and for the peripherals to pick up. I mean, you could have you could have Justice Leagued it <laughs> as much yeah. as I hated that movie. Right, like, like that was a good way to introduce. Uh, well, it wasn't Justice League, but they introduced it in, but um, in uh, Batman v Superman. Yeah, Superman. Yeah, you, like, you could have done all that. <laughs> yeah. so all, all those little, all those little, you know, those little seeds there, all those little Easter eggs, just to tease you to like, okay, this is where we're headed now, and. You know, he could have swung out the door like, "Hey, I've got people to find," or right, I something. Check this out, you know. Let me, let me, get, let me head to Shield headquarters and talk about this. Like something to to bridge the gap better than yeah. what they did. And then, okay, last thing, and then we'll jump into Phase Four. But like the whole with the scrolls at the end and them not actually being, <laughs> uh, I mean, the post credit scenes when they when they actually weren't Nick Fury. And uh, I always forget her name. Maria Hill. Maria Hill. Like I was like, okay, what? Like, what was the like? What was the point? And then yeah, and then you cut to him being like on a fake beach at Shield headquarters. Like yeah, chilling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just chilling. Like ah, oh, nah. <laughs> like see, see, nah, see, you see the scroll, <laughs> the scrolls. To me, you can't tell a story, in my opinion. You can't tell a story with the scrolls mm -mm. without the Fantastic Four. Right. You, you do you do all of that years and years of, of great writing, you do the disjustice by not having a Fantastic Four team to battle the scrolls involved in some way. 
But just yeah. they don't have to be the main thing if you're rewriting it and you're telling a new story. But right. you've got to have the Fantastic Four there in some way, even right. if you, even if all you do is cast Reed Richards and have a face on the screen, right. and he is in interstellar space and you're using some supercomputer to get information from him because they're off earth for a reason that because there's no film but just to get information on how to to battle them because they are such a big part of the scrolls involvement in in marvel universe period yeah so it's like ah oh, that just yeah, that, that that irritated me too. I was the like, scroll oh. invasion without the Fantastic Four. It's like, yeah. come on. And, and like, I was like, when I saw them, I was like, okay, cool. This this is gonna be the introduction of. Uh, even if you don't even show them, right? Like, even if you show like, I don't know, like a shot of like, you know, <laughs> the tower or something. I don't know. Like, uh, see, that, that's not even the best way to introduce them for me. Like to me, um to show that they're the scrolls like to me it would have been better if they like you saw hill and and fury talking yeah and like some some room or like like a some room where like, there's like a mirror like oh like they're like, like they're from a window right. like shoot headquarters yeah. and you see fury turn and the reflection you know in the in the mirror you, you can see like part part of a scroll face yeah. And one of them's like, fix that. And you see him like, you see it morph like, just to, to like, oh, snap. Like, just, you didn't have to give me the full scroll. Yeah. yeah. Just, just show, just show me the, you know, that one of the, you know, one of these scroll shape changers slipped a little bit. Obviously, Hill knows because she sees it. She's one of them. Because you don't want to show all of them out. You know, all you got this, you got this, you know, R&B music, you know, video scene with them <laughs> in the water and all that. I'm like, Oh look, they look like a they look like a band. Great, like and now we can we can count how many of these shape shifting scrolls are there. No, sh- tease me one. Obviously, right. there's another one that we know of, and let the imagination wonder then how many of these super scrolls are out there. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, even just like Fantastic Four side, like I get it. You haven't cast, or maybe they have. I don't. I'm pretty sure they haven't because it would have been all over the internet. But like, yeah. you haven't casted the Fantastic Four yet. But like. Give us something like give us a nod to the to their to them being in the movie somehow besides the potential uh, credit scene where it showed you know Stark Tower and it said you know something big is coming one two three right. question mark which you know it's like everybody's like oh yeah four like but which I mean if you didn't even catch that well I just spoiled it for you but <laughs> <laughs> um, you know like. Something better than that, because I mean that, that I didn't even you know I barely caught it. Like I was like, oh, caught it in the background there because I wasn't even paying attention to it, but it just happened to catch my eye. And then I was like, maybe that's nothing. I didn't even pay attention to it, so I saw it online and I was like, oh, that was a thing. Okay, it probably was a thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean you know, and then like you know, there's all these Easter eggs and all all these movies have Easter eggs, so it's like you yeah. catch it, you're like, yeah, it's probably a thing, but. I mean, they could have did better, right? If you're gonna bring out the scrolls, then at that point, just be like, even if you just showed the thing, because like he's CG, he's gonna be probably mostly CG anyway. <laughs> so well, like, well, Reed, yeah, I mean, if, if you've got him stretching all the time, like yeah, he's gonna be mostly like, CG. Yeah, like you don't have to show, like you don't even have to show his face because you're like, all right, we haven't casted him yet, so let's not yeah, show just, his just face. Have a, just have him have somebody voice Reed Richards. Right, or on, have him like, on, 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 like a stretchy call. arm or something. I don't know. Give us yeah. something better than that. That was just... Yeah, just just to be like, you know, we sim- <laughs> simply, we're, they're fighting them. How do we deal with these scrolls? You know what? We need to talk to the foremost expert on right. dealing with the scrolls. <laughs> right. Or Dr. Richards. Yeah. Dr. Richards. Just say the name. Yeah. See, let's, let's say the name. <laughs> like Dr. Richards, you're on speaker. Captain Marvel. Like, just yeah. give us Dr. Something. Richards, you're on speakerphone. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's it. And then cut it. Like, don't even say, don't even have his voice. Just cut it right there. Yeah. Just cut it right there. Just mention it. Before he even speaks, cut it. Right. And I'll be like, oh my God. Mind blown. Okay. And hey, and, and his wife is invisible. We can right. pretend like she's in the room all the time. So we can never see her. <laughs> she was there the whole time. She was there the whole time. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. But I yeah, I was kind of I was disappointed with that. But um, yeah, I was just like, yeah, overall, like like I said, the whole point of even going on this rabbit hole that we always go down was just like we were talking, we were sitting and we were talking, and we were like, like like Country said, his favorite Spider-Man of all time is still Tobey Maguire, besides the, you know, the animated series. Right. 
And um, I said, you know, like Spider-Man, I loved Andrew Garfield because he had that, the witty banter and, the, yes. you know, like, Which Toby I get that. it. He wasn't a great Peter Parker, but like Spider-Man, I was like, this is Spider-Man. When he right. was Spider-Man, I'm like, this is Spider-Man. You know, the, the corny jokes and all that. I was like, he's playing it well. <laughs> Ooh, he got a knife. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it was like, this is great. Like, like my favorite scene is in the beginning when he had the bad guy. He's like, he had him up against the wall. And it, it, like, he's just making jokes. Like, he's like, pinning him up against the wall. And I'm like, this is hilarious. Like, that's Spider-Man, right? Yep. And so, like, you know, my all-time favorite cinematic Spider-Man is probably him. You know, Peter Parker, I think it's Tobey Maguire. And uh, it, like, like you said, Tom Holland plays them both well. Um, He's a good balance, but yes. yeah, I, like I said, the conversation we were having because everybody was just like, "Oh, Homecoming was the best. It was the greatest Spider-Man ever. There's no no Spider-Man can beat that." And I was just like, agree with that. "Was it really a great movie? Like when you look back and you, you you filter through all the hype, was it really a great movie? Like, how many people have rewatched Homecoming since it came out? Right? Because like, good question. That's my gauge of." Was it a great movie? Like, I watched Winter Soldier, like, I don't know how many times. Because that was so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was an amazing Marvel movie. Like, that's the one you're like, yo, that was, like, it was legit. It was, it lived up to the hype. But, like, how many times, like, I've wa- I watched Homecoming literally maybe twice after it came out. And both times, because I was just flipping through the channels and it, it happened to be on. Mm. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, why not, right? And I was like, and both times I was just kind of like, hmm, I'm bored. <laughs> right? Like, it's not, it's not as exciting as it was when oh, I was in theater. Oh, 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 look, a girl's falling down. Wait, I think Spider Man's <laughs> going to shoot some webbing and catch her. <laughs> right. Like in every other one. Like, <laughs> like, I was just like, ah, oh, it's not as, it wasn't a, like, you know, there's that theater hype when you're just in a theater and you got the experience with the surround sound and the seats and everything. And, like this is the first time you've seen it and you just got all that hype and all that pent up emotion and you're like, this is amazing. And then like, like that's my gauge for me. Like if I could watch it at home and still be like, yo, this is still dope. Then that's a good movie. Otherwise I'm like, "Eh, it was hype. Right. Not saying it wasn't a great movie. It wasn't a good movie, but was it a great movie? Was it the best Spider-Man of all time? No, probably not. I don't think it was. And like, you know, Far From Home really just made me realize that because I was just sitting there and I was just like, the whole time watching, like, like my wife loved it, but she's also not a big, like she's a big Marvel Cinematic fan. Yeah. She doesn't know all the backstories and all that stuff. So for her, it's not like, it was like, oh, this is a great movie. It's entertaining. It's Spider-Man. It's cool. But like, like when you really start being like, you know, like you said, when you're, when you're critical and you're, you're kind of not critical, but like, you know, you're objective. Yes. And you're just like, yeah, uh, objectively, as a fan, it was okay. It yeah. was entertaining. It, I mean, it wasn't. I didn't, I didn't waste my son, my Saturday, and you know, right, and thirty bucks or whatever. How much movies cost these days? Oh, good God. Um, <laughs> you know, what I mean, it's like it was entertaining. It kept, you know, it was, it was a nice date night or whatever. Yeah, um, a nice day away from the kids. Like it, it, it's cool, but um. Was it's, not, it's not a masterpiece. Yeah, as a fan, I'm not like, oh my god, I'm, I can't wait till the the Blu-ray set drops, or you know, now everything's digital. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Was, and you, you yeah. mentioned it, the rewatchability. Right. I've re I've rewatched Avengers. I don't know how many times. Yeah. I've rewatched Winter Soldier. I don't know how many times. Yeah. I've rewatched uh, Civil War a whole bunch of times. Oh yeah. I've rewatched Infinity War a bunch of times. And when Endgame drops, I'll rewatch that. Iron Man Two was another one of my favorites. You know, but like, <laughs> I, I watched Homecoming, and I'm like, okay, I really I don't have a desire to watch it again. Like, yeah. and if I did watch it again, it will be purely to show Michael Keaton's parts and why Michael Keaton is just awesome. Which, yeah. unless you're young, you shouldn't need any reminding that Michael Keaton is awesome. Yeah, um, I mean that's it. Like there. And not taking away again, not taking from Tom Holland because he was great. And if you if we put him in Tobey Maguire Spider Man, then we probably have a perfect movie. Yeah. But you know, he did his best to carry the film, and but the, the dialogue was clunky. It was long. It's way too much exposition in the dialogue, you know. And it was just. And you had his you know, to me even just having his friend, you know. Yeah. Um, I've always forget his name. What's his friend's name? 
the guy in the chair. <laughs> I just call him the guy in the chair. The guy in the chair. <laughs> like, ha- having him find out in the first movie like that, like, and, and that was like, yo, this dude is not good at being, it's not, he's not good at Spider-Man. He's, he's, a be- he's like, come on, your buddy, you swing into your room, your buddy's sitting there, you had, you had to close the door with the webbing, like, and then jump, like, come on. And then, yeah. and then May sing at the, him at the end. I'm like, yeah. yo, how in twice in one movie do people find out you're Spider-Man? <laughs> Dude, you suck. Like, and and <laughs> actually, they say twice, three times. Because yeah, the villain found out, too. So and Tony Stark time, And, well, he already knew. But, yeah. Well, he already knew, but, was, I mean. That was, but that was a different film, so. Yeah, yeah. So, but I'm saying he. He, he, so. he deduced it, yeah. Well, we expect him to. He's got all the resources in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but your buddy, your nerd buddy, your, the, the villain, and your aunt, Two of them walk in on you being Spider Man. Like, dude, yeah. come on, really? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, come uh, on, dude. Come on, bro. You're yeah. bad at the superhero thing. All right. And then even even when he met uh, Mysterio from the beginning, like, he just like freely just walked in, no mask, no nothing. Like, hey, yeah. I don't know this guy at all, but hey, like, I'm I'm Peter Parker. What's your name? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? What? Yes. Like, it, 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 made, it made no sense. Like I, whether you're with Fury, Fury or not, like, like in the comics, like Spider Man was always so secretive about his identity because of Mary Jane and Aunt May. Right. You know, even to the point of doubt, that's what caused Civil War. Was he yeah, didn't well, want to give up his identity? Right. <laughs> now, that was so so huge in Civil War when he revealed to the world who he was. Yeah. That was a that was a like climax. Right. To the story. Like, and then that that was my thing with Toby Spider Man too though. Because half the movie, he had his mask off. He's running around New York City right. with his mask off. Yeah. And then I'm far from home, like, yo, again, with the mask off all the time. Yeah. Like, didn't they make fun of this in, in Into the Spider-Verse? Like, 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 <laughs> like, come on. Y'all know this is dumb. Right. Why are y'all doing this again? Yeah. Like, and I, I can, I get it. Kind of like with And then time. the part that made no sense to me is, like, he's so free with it, right? But then, like, he's in, he, they were in Italy. And they were in Venice, and he's like, "Oh, you know, I can't, I can't help you, because you know my my classmates are in, and they're gonna they're gonna figure it out after Washington." And it's like, "You're always with your mask off anyway." Yeah, it's like you you ain't been trying this whole time. You ain't been trying hard. Now you want to try hard? Like really? Like now you're worried about? Oh, I'm I'm gonna be I'm in Berlin, and my you know my classmates are gonna figure it out. Like, dude, you weren't trying very hard before. Yeah, like, <laughs> you will be really, really lax with this, bro. Yeah, now, yeah, now you, yeah. now you act like you're concerned. Okay, concerned to the point that you're wearing, you know, they're calling you Night Monkey and that whole thing. But uh, which, I mean, come on, like, how does not like okay, Night Monkey has exactly the same powers as Spider Man? <laughs> like, how did anybody not figure that out? But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. I, I wasn't. I didn't even want to get into the whole night monkey thing because that was just stupid. That was that whole. I was like, what? Where? Where are we going? Why? <laughs> like in a world where, like, really? Come on, guys. All right. Anyway. All right. So enough of that. Uh, let's talk so phase four and five. Let's talk phase four. So first part of phase four with a release date of May first, twenty twenty, is Black Widow. Yes. So this will be starring obviously the lovely Scarlett Johansson. It will also have David Harbour, aka Hopper of Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. He will be playing Red Guardian, uh, also known as Alexei Shostakov. <laughs> uh, Rachel Weiss will be Melina. Florence Pugh as Yelena Belova. Ot, you know, I can't even pronounce his last name. Fajbinelli. I don't even know. As <laughs> Mason. Uh, Ray Winstone in an undisclosed role, and it will be directed by Kate Shortland. Wow. I like the cast. Mm-hmm. I, I am, I'm a big David Harbour fan, despite the horrible job. Not that he did a horrible job. It's the horrible movie that was uh, his Hellboy. Um, yeah. And Rachel Wise, I haven't seen her in a long time in anything. Yeah, it's me. cool. <laughs> it's cool to see uh, to see her in this cast. I don't know where they're where they're going with this film. Like this I film like should it, it should have like, happened already. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be some kind of like I don't know, not origin story, but like it's gonna it has to be a backstory, right? Because she's gone. 
And well, it's either it's a backstory or this is taking place in again in, in, in another in another oh, earth. Dude. Yeah, in a different earth. But I feel like I don't know if that's so that I mean that's because that's the first movie out, right? Next 2020. Yep, May 1st, 2020. So it's like that's gonna be because I mean we know Doctor Strange is gonna inter- introduce the multiverse. I mean, it's in the title, right? It's Doctor Strange in the multiverse. No, um, it's Doctor Strange. Um, is it Doctor Strange in the multiverse? No, oh, no, it's it's multiverse of madness. Something, yeah, I know something like that. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I mean, deduction says that he's going to be the one to introduce the multiverse, which makes sense. Um, well, no, see, I wouldn't say that. I would say he's he's going to be the one that makes the multiverse accessible but the introduction i think will happen throughout these other films where obviously this earth has lost their natasha romanoff but they may pull this one in from a different verse because they need her for some odd reason or just because you know they need scarlet that'd be interesting how to how they do that be interesting to see (laughs) but but they i mean i mean into the Spider Verse helped understand how that can be done, you know. So it's not like fans, even the casual fan, don't have an understanding of how that could work. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure like, like as far as like uh, continuity, right? Because like Into the Spider Verse isn't really in with the. I mean, it's it's not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so it's not in continuity with. It's it's not, but I'm just using it as an example as far as common fans have seen. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I get that. Then. I'm just thinking from like a writer's perspective. Like, we've never, I mean, with the exception of Far From Home, we've never introduced the multiverse. How do we do that with Natasha, who's probably one of the most ordinary <laughs> of the <laughs> Avengers? <laughs> like, yeah, of I mean, all the Avengers, right? Like, yeah, she's a spy. It's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's just a super spy. With you know, I mean. Well, but, but even Endgame. I mean, because depending upon how you want to define the multiverse, whether different times or actual different dimensions, you had we had we saw two nebulas in yeah. Endgame. So true. That was a time jump thing. That's a time jump, but again, universe. but it's but it's still she's from a different universe because what ha- the events in her timeline are different. For sure. the that now right. are going on, so it's that in itself is a different verse, right? Um, I mean, that's true. You can, you could, you can argue that. Um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I just, I'm just curious where we're going to go with it. It'll be interesting to figure out, kind of like, are, is this going to be kind of like a backstory thing? They're, they're just like, hey, hey, we should this movie eight years ago, but now we're doing it. On it now because, like, you know, she's gone, and so everybody misses her, and let her back somehow <laughs> right or like i don't know i mean it'll be interesting to see how they do it or maybe they will just bring her back somehow with you know like maybe um you know bruce banner figures out how to bring her back oh uh, yeah the way they shoehorned the non-existent romance between her and yeah. banner um, yeah and then like i mean that that would justify like him sort of saying you know when he did the snap after the snap like i i i really i really really tried to bring her back but right. i just couldn't right like I, you know it kind of like it sort of gives closure to that whole scenario right like mm-hmm. like almost like him mentioning that was just like it was like you can easily allude to like he never gave up right like he never gave up trying to figure out how to bring her back well he- um, Here's here's the thing. I just thought of this, and they could do it this way, and hopefully not doing it without completely stealing from another uh, entity. But they could do it the way they did it in Fringe, mm-hmm. where you know he took his son from the all, all the verse because his son died. So it could be Banner is trying to get her back so hard he's found another one and simply took that one from his okay. first to right. replace the one he lost like pretty much like how how um uh, into the spider verse where fisk was trying to bring oh, it fisk was trying to do the same thing yeah seems to be the you know the storyline for most of these universe stealing people replacement storylines i mean i can see that i can see that 
it, it, I think it would make sense, right? Because it's like, well, you know, of the, of the super geniuses, Bruce Banner is definitely up there. Um, and then because of this, you know, romance and like, you know, he just can't, he's already, you know, they, they said in, the writer said in, in for Endgame said that, you know, that he had permanent damage to mm-hmm. his arm for the snap. So like, you know, now it's that like, all right, like I don't have, I'm not, I'm, I'm still, you know, Banner Hulk, but uh, like, I don't have the strength anymore. So like now I'm sort of de- devoting my life to like getting back the love of my life sort right. of thing, right? Because like you can't really use him as the Hulk anymore um, in any movie if he's got this permanent, until you figure out a way to fix it, which, you know, right now they're saying it's permanent. Um, like he's yeah. not the Hulk anymore. So what else can you really use him for other than like his Is brain? Right. right. And like, okay, he's obsessed with this love interest. And so. That he never had any moments with, but you know. Right. You know, she and yeah. Cap had more flirtation. <laughs> and she and Hawkeye had clearly more flirtation <laughs> than her Which, and Bruce. Well, it's always so weird to me considering that he's married with kids, but. Um. <laughs> yeah, hey, and they always talk about. Oh, um, <laughs> Uh, what happened in Berlin or something like that? Right, like, yeah, no. yeah. So really, what what really went down? What really that? happened out there? Because <laughs> it sounds like so it really went down. <laughs> so like y'all really have something going on there. Y'all keep mentioning it. Right. So um, yeah, that's gonna be interesting to see. I, I mean, like I said, I, I, I'm excited for it. I think she was a great Black Widow. Um, she all the way up until this point, like she's done it well. Um. How about just bring back the red hair though? I'm sick of like changing your hair. Yeah, yeah. That especially in Endgame with the like the half blonde. half blonde, half yeah. it was weird. Um yeah, I, I I would like to just stick with it. Well, maybe she will. I mean, in, in real life she's she went back to her, the red hair. So um who knows? We'll see. So let's let's ad- let's address a rumor real quick around this film. Um so Rachel Weiss is uh, I obviously cast Melina. Uh, some people in the Moon Mills and Reddit and such think that this casting is a misdirection. Um, as mm-hmm. in the comics, if you know the comics, Melina is Iron Maiden. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the rumors are that they, uh, people think that in Black Widow, Melina will turn out to be a gender swapped version of Taskmaster. Because the rumors have been mm-hmm. that Taskmaster will be the villain for this Black Widow movie. Okay. Could be interesting. And I think that if that rumor could potentially be true, that would be another inkling that this could possibly be happening in a different universe. Yeah, because, I mean, you can easily explain, number one, why Taskmaster is a woman and not a man. Yes. But also, it'd be... It's it's a change of pace, for which which we know that these writers are, are doing more and more nowadays. Like they don't want to stick strictly to the source material, but they want to kind of switch it up a little bit. Hence the read the source material, but right. <laughs> um, hence the end. I mean, well, you know, Disney is very tight on there. Oh yeah, um, Marvel has been fantastically yeah, better at yeah. anything Sony yeah. or Fox has decided to do. But I mean, Disney in general, I think um, across the board, but definitely Marvel has been like. Yeah, it's got to be in continuity. It's got to be this way. I mean, just the fact of the first three phases, the way they planned it out for 10 years, <laughs> like, you know, this is how we want it to end. Right. You know, um, just shows you how dedicated they are to, number one, their own source material, but also, like, keeping in continuity with with the source material. Um, so I could definitely see that, like, we can explain that, you know, explain that away. Um I think it'd be cool. It'd be different. It'd be a nice change of pace. Not not as predictable. Because, that, I mean, that's the hard part, right? It's like, how do you remain in continuity but not be predictable? Right. Right? And still make it an entertaining movie um, or sets of movies in this case. Um, you I know. think this is going to be a standalone, though. I don't think there's going to be a Black Widow 2. Right? Well, I mean, just like as far as like the whole entire the whole, thing yeah, the in whole general. Thing. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I'd say why not. Uh, and like I said, they've been sticking to a lot of, a lot of these sort of like little nuances and shakeups just to kind of keep it interesting, keep it fresh. Yeah, which is cool. I mean, I'm not against it, right? Like, no, I'm, I'm with it too. Sounds good. Cool. Um, All right. So next, 
is going to be the first TV show, and that will be Falcon and Winter Soldier and the Winter Soldier release fall 2020 on Disney Plus. Uh, so Anthony Mackie will reprise his role as Sam Wilson slash Falcon slash Captain America. Sebastian Stan <laughs> will reprise his role as Bucky Barnes slash Winter Soldier. Emily Van Camp will reprise her role as Sharon Carter. And um, Daniel Brule, I believe, um, is how you pronounce his last name. It's German. I, you know, curse me. Uh, I, I can't do German names. Um, it's got the U with the two dots on it. <laughs> he will be reprising his role as uh, Helmet Zero, uh, which I'm kind of surprised not calling him Baron Zemo, but whatever. Um, if you recall, I know you do, but if you're listening, if you recall, uh, he played Zemo in the Civil War film. He's the one who uh, released Bucky and tried to frame him for the bombing that ultimately killed T'Chaka. Yes. So, um, obviously, the end of Endgame with the passing of the shield left a lot of buzz amongst comic book and MCU fans here. So, being that this is a series and not a film, what, what, what are your thoughts on this? Because, you know, the series, is that we, the series we've seen on, you know, on ABC, Agent Carter, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is going to go into its final season, um, it's been an up and down event as far as TV shows here. Um, obviously, they will have more flexibility being that it's going to be on Disney Plus and not on, not that it matters, ABC, they own ABC anyway. So, um, but they'll probably have a little bit more flexibility as far as the level of content because it won't be on broadcast television. Um, and I think they have more flexibility with um, filming too. Probably. Because, um, like, you can get, you can sort of like cram all these episodes into a series of films, you know, filming sets. Instead of like with TV, it was like you had to kind of stick to that weekly schedule, right? Which is much harder to do in general. Um, and then when you're, when you're trying to get these big name actors and stuff like that, it's it's super hard because you got scheduling conflicts, right? Because they're doing other movies and they're doing other TV shows or whatever, um, other other engagements in general. Um, even if they're not doing movies and stuff, they travel around, they're speaking, they do stuff. Right, they make appearances, right? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think with the with the in, introduction of Disney Plus and then like, like sort of that, because they're basically taking that Netflix Marvel model, right? Like with yep. like Luke Cage and, and Daredevil and Jessica Jones and all those other ones, right? And just like we're gonna film all these and just mash drop them out to the and yeah, it's a TV series, but really right. in reality, like we're dropping it all on the same day. So yeah, um, you know, here you go. Uh, I think that gives them a lot of flexibility to implement these different big name characters mm -hmm. um, that Agent Carter and, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. didn't have. Um, they just didn't have that flexibility because you're on daytime TV and, you know, or primetime TV. Right. And you just, like, a weekly schedule, like, maybe I can get you in one episode but not consistently for, you know, weeks and even years on end. Right. Like, I mean, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter weren't for years, <laughs> you know. Um, so it's, I can drop you in here and there. But uh, I don't have that same flexibility that I can with. Like, we can do, all right, let's, let's shoot this for, you know, six months, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you can still fly out and do whatever you got to do and fly back and finish out the shooting. Right. Uh, versus, like, I need this done this week because we got to start editing and da 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 because we need to have it drop on Thursday at 7 p.m. Right. Um, every week. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be – it'll be much better um, – with that, and it, I think that gives them a lot of flexibility to include the MCU and, you know, different nods to that and maybe even some surprise um, appearances from different, you know, some of the main MCU characters that we, you didn't get to do that in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or right. Agent Carter. Um, you didn't get to in introduce any real big name heroes. It was a lot of, a lot of just S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and, you know, just yeah, kind of. like Which are like, like. <laughs> came and called them on letter grade level characters. Those right, are, right. They're like, like X characters. Right. You know? just, like no one, yeah. no one, no one, only shoot agent people have really ever cared about are Fury, uh, <laughs> Sharon Carter, uh, Dum Dum, that's, um, and maybe Alexander Pierce. Right. But that's like it. Like no yeah. one else cares about shield characters. Yeah. 
you know so i think that's definitely gonna um i think it's gonna be good like i said um just the fact that they're using um you know sebastian stan and um matthew mackey right um i think that's just a a, a testament to what they're able to do on mm-hmm. disney plus um so it's like hey we listen we're sticking with the movies you know we got these guys i mean granted yeah they're b-level but like it's never been done before you right. know at least not that i can think of in my lifetime or, or yours i mean we're not that much difference in age but um it's never really been done before where it's like you have a tv show with this the actual it's always been like this is the cinematic daredevil and this is the tv daredevil and right just pretend that the other one doesn't exist when you're watching right. the other one, right? Like, <laughs> but, yeah, but now we, we finally have the continuity right. and the tie-in, so it's right. not separate things. Well, yeah. what's really the most exciting to me um, about this is that um, was the announcement that um, the Baron Zemo character will be pretty much the comic book version of Zemo. Like, he yeah, is... Right. Full- he is full out going to be Zemo, and that is just like so exciting. Yeah, I was, I'm, I, I was. That was one of the things I definitely was excited for, because I was like, I was, I was disappointed with him in the movies. Yes, it was like this isn't really Baron Zemo. Like this isn't the Zemo that I know. You know what right. I mean? Like this the is Zemo I know would would, would have been caught <laughs> this fast. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's cool that they're they're bringing that in. Um, yeah, I mean I'm excited for it. Like I said, Winter Soldier was probably my favorite marvel movie in general i love sebastian stan i love anthony mackie as falcon i love that he got the shield that's another one for the black people <laughs> don't call me racist but hey i'm just saying <laughs> hey we, we get too many big name characters we got we got black panther and we got blade which we're gonna talk about and now we got we got we got captain america and yes. 2019 is a black man <laughs> with the president that we have <laughs> i'm just saying yeah, it took it, well, you know, it took it took you know I was shocked. Um I mean we talked about it when we talked about Endgame, I'm still shocked that they did the change that fast because obviously can you know in the canon there have been many Captain Americas. Right. Um, including, obviously including Bucky. Including Bucky, um, multiple times. US agent took up the mantle before. Yep. Um so to have and comic book wise, we know that Falcon is not the first black man to take the shield. Right. But, you know, for that storyline, which really only took only dropped what two thousand and fourteen, I think it was, when that came out in the books. Like it's still a very yeah, really, fairly recent. Actually, yeah, they'll have it somewhere. It's in here. I mean, of course, it's of course, a, I have that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a very new story. I gotta so. get this comic book. <laughs> But um, yeah, I think it was 2014. It was something like that. Yeah, I don't think for, it was. For this to happen so soon, you know, is extremely awesome. Yeah, know, I was like again so surprised to see it, um, where it's taken decades for other stories to, to, you know, to come to light. Yeah, that's 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 what I was excited for because I was like. Uh, yeah, I'm, I didn't think it was going to, because a lot of these other stories, they don't follow that same, you know, they're not, the, like the, the books, I mean, of course, are way ahead of the the films. The films. So I was like, man, they got so much material with Captain America. Oh, yeah. It'll be a while before these, we see actually see an actual, you know, Falcon become Captain America. But uh, yeah, it actually happened pretty quick. Because I, I was kind of surprised that we didn't see you know, more of Steve, you know, the introduction of um uh-huh. of Lady Hydra. Yeah. yeah there it is. <laughs> the it only was, thing I didn't uh, like about that was it was the costume. Because like, yeah. like I, to me it was like either pick the shoot or pick the wings. Like mixing them both just looks really weird. Yeah. Like how you like how you fly him with that shield on one arm, like how <laughs> how, how how is that working? How does that work? And I'm actually aerodynamics like that just doesn't work. No, you got me thinking about the date. I'm looking, trying to see if I can see what the date was. It should be in the first page. It should be, but it's not. Uh, ah, second page. Second page. 2014. Actually, 
2016, first printing. Of that? Oh, well, no. I, I know. I was. I, I know they, they made the change earlier than that. So it might have been 2014. Well, this is the collector's edition. So. Okay. Um, so maybe you might be right. It might be 2015. Because now I'm looking at it. It's, it's look a, at this is right. collector's edition. But um, yeah, man. Either way, that was still fast. Yeah, that's really fast. Yeah. Like it's it's super duper fast. But yeah, this yeah. Uh, you know, of course, you know how to get this like first first day. And actually this is that's nice and glossy. <laughs> yeah. I had it I had it bagged and boarded. So I was like, this is never this is never gonna touch air. <laughs> <laughs> no air here. No. Uh, my son will be reading this. Like right? And even then, like, he better not mess it up. <laughs> like, boy. Okay, so Wilson as Captain America on the cover of the all-new Captain America number one, November 2014. Okay, so that makes sense. So, five years. That's fast. That was fast. That's really fast. Especially considering, like, there was only... Like, there wasn't that many Captain America movies in between the announcement. Right. Exactly. That's really fast. Yeah. Next to the list here, we have where Marvel has spent a whole lot of their budget in The Eternals, which drops November 6th, 2020. This film will be starring Angelina Jolie as Stina, Richard Madden, best known as Rob Stark of Game of Thrones. He will be playing uh, Icarus. Good to see him back into something. Yeah, it's good to see him back after the you the beast live action thing he did um no no that was cinderella cinderella live action was, yeah cinderella, cinderella. Which, that was a long time ago and wasn't he a wrinkle um into the wrinkle in time not wrinkle in time he was in the the forest one he was in another one of theirs i think hmm. i forget I um i don't remember that one importantly sama hayek as ajak uh who was the leader of the eternals um mm -hmm. And we've got Kumail Nanjiani. I don't know. How to, I can't pronounce that. As Kingdo, Lauren Ridloff as Makari, Brian Tyree Henry as Fastos, Leah McHugh as Sprite, Don Lee as Gilgamesh, and directed by Chloe Zhao. So, one, The Eternals, not your everyday heroes that you'd think you would see on the big screen yeah but for us super super comic book heads this is really really cool and very uh what's the word i'm looking for very bold it's a very bold move on marvel's part um i think it's been great that they have been coming out with films for these bc level characters um giving them shine and turtle some shine yeah. really helps to me unlock the great mysteries of the cosmos right with the with the mcu which will help continue. hopefully tells us what captain marvel is doing in all these movies yeah, you know, and also, <laughs> yeah, yeah right it'll also help with the multiverse but it'll also help <laughs> every time tell what's going on i'm, I'm help other people need me you know i'm out here busy um but like this this should this should have uh, a little bit of a tongue tie this should help unlock the things along the Captain Marvel range, but also the Nova Corps, which has been grossly ignored since um, Guardians. Yeah. We still don't have Richard Ryder as Nova, uh, which we should have had after all that. Like, there's a whole lot of things out there that this can help unlock and tell stories for. Yeah. What do you think of this cast? Uh, I think it's a good cast. Um, it's going to be interesting with with some of the like Angelina Jolie, Salma Hayek, I mean, great actresses, but you know, I mean, we haven't seen them in movies or TV, and I don't know, it's been a long time that I can remember. <laughs> so, um, good to see them back, but also like it's going to be interesting to see them in different roles than they've ever played before. I mean, Angelina Jolie, she did Tomb Raider, but it was different. Um, and it wasn't, you know, depending on who you ask, it wasn't the greatest Tomb Raider. Um, 
<laughs> we're not gonna go there. We're, we're not right, to, we're not jumping down that rabbit hole today. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I just left it at that. Um, so uh, you know, it, it, it's always interesting when you get these like really, really A level actors and actresses. I'm I'm thinking, you know, Jamie Foxx says Electro. Um, mm. <laughs> how For they C level character? Yeah, how they do in these like C level, B level roles. Um, because like you expect you know, this is sort of like greatness out of them. But it's like, because they're sort of bound by the character. Um, they can't really be the full. Um, well, it's, it's how much can the, how much can the star power elevate the character? Exactly. That's what I was looking for. Because exactly. I mean, that's, that's what, that's what casting Benedict Cumberbatch was for Dr. Strange. Right. Dr. Strange has never been an A-level Marvel character. He's been a C, C plus to a B character for for a very long time. for a very long time so right. it's how much can this great actor and benedict uplift his character i mean in iron man i mean he was yeah he flirted with he was even when he was an a he was a bottom a right and and downey's acting lifted him up um so it was like how much can these can these good actors really or great actors and highly talented ones lift up these low level characters exactly um so far They've done a great job. I mean, with Scarlet with um, Black Widow. I mean, Black Widow has always been a C character. Yeah. Now she has a great. She's, yeah, she. Problem. I mean, if you never read any of the comics, you'd think she was one of the essential Avengers. Right. Um, exactly. I mean, which she never. I mean, reality won. was, yeah, she wasn't really. <laughs> <laughs> she, was always, yeah, she was always a reserve. Yeah. yeah. You know, not even a B level. Like, hey, yeah, we'll we'll bring Natasha. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Like, we need some yeah. spy stuff done. Yeah, we need you done. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Send her over there. Like yeah. she was never a, a big part. So right. now her stat, this character stats is so elevated that it's like people can't imagine things without her. So yeah, you can't imagine Avengers without thinking Black Widow, which is yeah. good. Which is yeah, it's, it's a good, good thing. thing. Yeah. So, exactly. um, if they can do the same thing, uh, I think it'll be. I think it'll be a good movie. Uh, I think. I think it's a good risk for Marvel because most people don't know who the Eternals are. So yes. there's no expectation. Even some fans, don't, I'm sure like people listen to the podcast are like, who? Yeah. Um, you know, even uh, us, you know, pro, self-proclaimed geeks um, are just like, you know, not everybody's into it. Cause I mean, even, you know, like it, listen, my pockets was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know, like, yeah, yeah. I, had, I had to make very smart comic book choices. Yes. Like, and we, and, <laughs> and growing up, we had to buy what we really, really wanted. Right. We're going to buy exactly. Spider Man or we're going to be like, or we're going to buy the Eternals. I'm right. buying Spider Man. <laughs> right, right. Like, that's just, so, yeah, that's just, yeah. That's just, I can't go to, I can't go to school and talk about the Eternals because nobody was going to be able to. <laughs> yeah, you um, ain't <laughs> So, I mean, you know, I, I get it. Right. So, I think it's a smart move. Um, Budget wise, like, I mean, come on, we know their pockets are deep, so it doesn't really oh, matter. Yeah. Super deep. Um, and I'm sure they'll make, just because it's Marvel, they'll make the money back. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, because the, the main hype, right, is the first weekend. Mm-hmm. And, like, once you get the first, if you can make all your money back in the first weekend, then you're good. And just because it's a Marvel movie, you're going to make all your money back in the first weekend because they haven't had a movie that's bombed yet. No. Um, you know, even some of the, the ones that we forget about, the Ant-Mans and stuff like that, like, they, they made enough. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it wasn't, yeah, they, they didn't make anywhere near something. At least they made enough to make a sequel. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. the fact that we live in the world where there are two Ant-Man films. Right. I never thought I'd say Ant-Man film in the same sentence before. And there's two of them. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not, you know, like I said, I, I think that's that's going to be great. That's going to be... Um, I, I think it's so it's a good do. it's a good safe move for for Marvel in the sense that like um the writers, the actors and actresses, um they kind of got some freedom, right? There's no pressure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like cause even if you piss off the hardcore fans, well, there's probably only like 20 of them. <laughs> right? Because it's, it's the internals. Exactly. Right? exactly. Like, because like, <laughs> like like even if you change a whole bunch of things, yeah. the, the internals are not some heralded, you know, beloved characters. Exactly. You know, it's not Captain America. It's not Spider Man. You know, it's not these ones that everyone has had a deep emotional connection to. Yep. You could change. You could change everything. You could change them into animals, yep. and, and only twenty five people are going to care. <laughs> right. 
It's literally like 15 people that were like, yo, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, everybody, everybody else doesn't care because they don't know or they just don't have that connection to the source material that they really are going to get bent out of shape about it. Right. So, so. They, yeah, they can they can take a lot of risks. They can do a lot of great things. And I think this film, you know, could really set up a whole lot of cool things for the, for the rest of phase four, probably maybe even into phase five. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm excited to see it, just to um, delve more into the, the, you know, that part of the Marvel world, just the, you know, space and and then even just, like, the Eternals, and then you start getting into, like, the Celestials, um, the Celestials <laughs> you know, and then hopefully that opens up the door for, I mean, I know it's probably going to be Fantastic Four that's going to introduce Galactus and Silver Surfer. And, it's got to be. But, um, you know, it's opening up that door, right? Like, mm-hmm. to that part of the, the Marvel universe that we haven't really seen yet. Yep. It's like, right now, we've really just been focused on Earth. And, uh, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy opened it up a little bit. Like, they gave us a peek. Right. Um, but now it's like, yeah, we're going full in. And uh, that would be cool to see because, I mean, and then once you get through that, and then we got the whole, like, the whole mutant side when we get into X-Men and all that stuff. And then bringing all that together, like, I mean, phase five, phase six is going to be crazy. <laughs> it's going to be like, I like, I feel like, I feel like phase, phase five and phase six is really going to bring back the childhood. Mm-hmm. Like, we had when you would like get up in the morning and you had Iron Man, Hulk, <laughs> X-Men, like all in a, a Spider-Man. Right. <laughs> Remember all those animated series that are just like, you're just like, yo, you were in Marvel heaven like for like three, four hours just watching back-to-back series and like they all sort of, ha- they had their crossover moments and stuff like that. Right. I feel like that's where we're going towards, right? Okay. Because it was like, you didn't really have that for so long because of the Fox deal, the Sony deal. It was like they couldn't, you know, Marvel could only do so much. And then they weren't doing movies, you know, before until now, besides like, you know, Blade, Spawn. Right. Um, which were good movies, but you know, they were they were kind of like nobody knew who they were. <laughs> so it was like Except yeah. for except for the hardcore fans. Right, right, right. right. So yeah. it was like nobody knew they were Marvel back then. Like I I was reading this article the other day and they were like, you know, like Blade really opened up the door for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I'm like, you know what? That was Marvel. Like, whoa, like yo. Well, like, yeah, I, I used to get the arguments all the time about Blade. I'm like, you know, Blade's a Marvel character, right? They're like, no, it's not. Nah, like, nah, no, nah. Blade is a Marvel character, <laughs> right. y'all. No, no, Blade's from this. Like, right, right, right. Because it was like that was in the '90s, and like there was no such thing as Marvel movies back then. And the ones that were that did exist were trash. And it's like, no, but Blade was a good Marvel movie. People like, forgot that Blade appeared in the Spider-Man animated series. Yep. You know, like, 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 dude, Blade's been yeah. around for a long time. Like, this is the Marvel thing. Yeah. Like, no, it's not. No, it's somebody yeah. from, like, okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue with you. I, I know what I'm talking about. So, um. And it did, because it, it was the first one they did that Marvel Studios made. And it was a, a, it was a commercial success. It wasn't, like, huge, huge. But they made their money back, plus some, enough to make, you know, two more movies. Yeah. Uh, and it showed the world that hey, you know what? We can take a C level character and and have and put a, a great actor to it and uplift the role. Because if they don't make that movie and Snipes doesn't kill the role the way he did, we're not talking about you know what we'll, you know our last subject in Phase Four. You know that that wouldn't be a thing at all if that doesn't happen. So like that that to me is a, a great um it's like it's like they're gonna make that as an acknowledgement like a celebration like hey this this is what kicked down the door for marvel studios you know because we was broke we had no money we were like all right, right we can make this cheap film here and have wesley snipes do it and and yeah. now look yeah and it turned out to be good i mean it worked out for them um but yeah, I just until until the third one when they the third one you know, they cast Triple H and uh, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I mean, you gotta give it. So when they were right, I mean, it, it was understandable at the time. Like it hadn't been done. Superhero movies weren't really a thing, and the ones that came out were terrible. Oh, and so it was like we're gonna ride the hype of like you know wrestling was huge back then. Triple H was like the Rock of that time, you know, before the Rock. And uh, I yeah, mean, but the Rock was already acting at the time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Like, but, it's like, like Triple, Triple H can't act. It's like, come no, on. No, no. <laughs> but I mean, but Triple H was like that guy, right? Like, I mean, in the wrestling, even I remember, you know, when I, I mean, he, wrestling. He's, he's got a great look. It's just like, just don't have Triple H talk. No, no, no. Yeah, and he had a, he had a good, at the time, he had a big following, right? Like, he, you know, yeah. he was, he was, he was the A team of, of, you know, in the A list of wrestlers at the time who were trying to get into acting and stuff like that. So, I mean, it was good. I mean, I would, I, I mean, you know, looking back now, it's like, yeah, I definitely wouldn't have casted him, but I get why they were trying to ride that wave of just like, yeah, let's get these guys in. It'll just bring people in because Triple H is in there. And he's he's, like, he's the oh, only wrestler actor worse than Batista. <laughs> not, not, not seen him. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how Batista get, keeps getting roles, but I don't understand how John Cena keeps getting roles. <laughs> I don't either. I can't see him, but like, I, I don't, I don't. Ah, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> but like, but even he's better than freaking Batista. Batista is terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bad. But before but, um, I go, and, yeah, um, I mean, fashion so... session. <laughs> it definitely, yeah. it definitely lifted things off. So, um, and also brought a lot of the martial arts. Um, of obviously Busty's times being a legit martial artist, it yeah. brought that to to the comic world that was severely lacking, yeah. which I am I'm excited for, but I don't know what's going to happen with this next film, which is Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yeah. This is scheduled to be released February twelfth, twenty twenty one. It will be starring Simu uh, Simu Lu as Shang Chi. Uh, if you don't know him, he currently uh, stars on the Netflix series Kim's Convenience, which is absolutely hilarious. If you haven't watched Kim's Convenience, it is – oh, I love oh, it. I have seen it now. Kim's Convenience is hilarious. Yeah. As myself, as someone who watches a lot of Korean shows, um, even though this is a Canadian-produced show, it it's it's so, so funny. I love yeah, it. I've seen um, it. I see. Well, I haven't seen everything, but I've seen the, like parts of it. Oh, it's funny. I just, <laughs> just you know, they're living. You know, the Korean family dynamic in the in Canada. It's it's great. <laughs> um, so we've got uh, we got a legend Tony Leong as the Mandarin, mm -hmm. which is of course uh, interesting as we had Ben Kingsley totally bomb the Mandarin character. Uh, I don't think it was his fault. I was writing. <laughs> yeah, but it was yeah, it was yeah, it was, it was maybe a little bit both. And then um, Aquafina in a undisclosed role, hmm. and this will be directed by Destin Daniel Cretton, who I want to. I think I've seen something he's done, but it's, it's not it's ringing a bell. So another. I know that came called Shang Chi a C level character. He's more like a like a D level <laughs> character. Like most people do not know who he is. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably do a video explaining some of these characters for you fans. But in short, if you don't know much about Shang Chi, um, his biggest contribution to popular characters to date is he's the one who taught Spider Man martial arts and helped Spider Man create his fighting style, the way of the spider. Yeah. Um, so I'm really hoping we get some Peter Holland um, and Shang-Chi training. Peter Holland. See, <laughs> Peter like Holland. Um, Tom Holland, <laughs> Parker. Um, some Tom Holland, Shang-Chi training scenes uh, in this film, because that would be super dope. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that's going to be cool. Um, I'm wondering if they're going to interview introduce well first of all before i go there um the rumor is that this new mandarin is going to be the real mandarin and they're going to kind of like play off the joke that the first one was just you know this guy that <laughs> it was more like this guy that was pretending to, pretending be, to be mandarin because yeah, like, he 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 had met the real mandarin or something like that i was reading an article about it um and they were saying like they're going to try and play it off that way like oh yeah he they met somewhere and he he that's when he like because you know he's an act the whole point the whole bit was he's an actor and they hired right. him to be this super bad guy he so he was like where can i pull my source material from and he's like oh i remember this guy that i met 
25 years ago or whatever and he was like it's really like bad you know evil guy you know, whatever and so I'm gonna wait, wait, we're, we're supposed to believe the mandarin left him alive <laughs> to then later mimic him okay yeah, i don't know i mean <laughs> uh, it was i mean obviously it's all speculation right but it was right i was reading i was like it it sort of could make it a little bit of sense right but um at least it kind of explains it right like in a way that it's not like the first mandarin was trash and like well, late. Like, this is the real Mandarin. Like, it's, right. it's like, okay, well, at least, okay, I can see that, right? Because he's this method actor, and he's like, oh, that's where he pulled it from, right? So, um, so, so copycat villains are going to super, <laughs> super villain extreme, okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. No, it, it's, it's interesting theory. It's sort of, yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. It, it, it makes for a good story, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's a good way to retcon stuff, I guess. <laughs> um, that, was, that wasn't the real Spider-Man. He's just an actor. <laughs> he was just an actor. <laughs> Hey, they did it with Nick Fury and oh uh, yeah, not far from home. But anyway, <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, I, I, so that would be cool. I want to see, I want to see the real Mandarin, right? Like the real Mandarin, um, because that'd be great. Obviously, I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be a real Mandarin, right? Because they're gonna talk about the Legend of the Ten Rings, which means that he's gonna have the actual rings, hopefully. Um, probably won't get them all, but he probably won't have them all. But it will be it'll be sort of a Thanos sort of thing, right? Yeah, like, they'll explain the Ten Rings. Yeah, when they introduced him, you know, and he already had one of the stones, right? Um, so it's like maybe he might have one of the rings, or maybe he might have a few. Who knows? But anyway, um, yeah, so that's gonna be cool. I'm excited to see that. I'm kind of disappointed that Tony Stark is dead because, like, we all know that, you know. The Mandarin was a big, a big Iron, Iron Man, Man villain. <laughs> so it's like to see, I wanted to. I, I, that was one of the things I always wanted to see was like the Mandarin face off against Iron Man, um, at least once. The real Mandarin versus the real Iron Man. Um, now, we'll, not unfortunately, <laughs> we got it. Iron Man. Now, now we, yeah, we got we got Peter Parker is Iron Man slash Spider Man slash Iron Man, um, <laughs> with his fake MJ. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean that's gonna be cool right so i'm, I'm excited about that uh, i'm guessing somehow danny rand's gonna pop up somewhere i'm sure um i i hope not hopefully it's not the netflix danny rand um uh, yeah <laughs> just don't no more Finn jones please yeah yeah hopefully please. it's the new marvel danny rand that's gonna that be much better martial arts yeah and actually is you know it's gonna be. I hope it's the real Iron Fist, and I hope that's the way they introduce him. Um, Cause I mean, I heard that they're getting rid of all the Netflix um, characters. That was what I, I heard. I've heard that too. I I hope that's not true because I, I hope it's not true. Uh, for some for, of them, I hope it's true. <laughs> well, except, for, except for Finn Jones, yeah. like you, you you can bring back obviously. Um, I forget his name. The dude that played Daredevil. Yeah, he was you good. can bring back Burst and all his Punisher. Yeah. You can bring back um, Luke Cage. Yeah. I'll, even though I didn't like her casting, um, Jessica Jones. Um, yeah, uh, Kristen, whatever, uh, as, yeah. as Jessica Jones. I did. I um, didn't like her casting. I'm not big on it, but you know, I, I, I grew. She it, grew it, on me. It, she didn't really grow on me. She's just she's established now. Yeah. So just like if you're gonna continue to work with the role. The character, let her just continue to play the character. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hope it's not true, but I, I mean, I, I don't know. They were saying something about contracts and blah, 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 because, you know, of course. they had to sign off all these deals. And then they but got did they, didn't they, they, didn't they mention Luke Cage in Homecoming? I, I could have sworn they mentioned I feel like, yeah, I think somebody did say something about Luke I Cage. Think it, I think his friend in the chair mentioned Luke Cage or something like that. Yeah. Um, like, he did because he was like he was like you're not bulletproof like Luke Cage or something yeah, like something it was like something that, like, yeah, yeah something I do like remember that, that. yeah um, um, it would be a shame to waste what you know the, what what they had in those really good characters it would be a shame to waste even um, Vincent DeFornio as Kingpin yeah I like that would be a complete shame awesome to waste because he is amazing yeah for sure. Like, um, did, like season three of Daredevil, him his performance in that was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so like, yes, you can re you can replace every, you can keep everybody else, but just lose Finn Jones, and I will be okay. Yeah. And we can. The rest or just get him like get him lessons. I don't know. Get him some acting. Le like Disney's got enough money, they can. Yeah, train him how to. Do you can train him to be to fight. 
just yeah. train him to, to look like he can fight on camera. Yeah. yeah, and not to say I'm the immortal Iron Fist before he gets beat up. Yeah, 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 Claire. Yes, please. It's not that, 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 that would be that would be nice. Just stop saying. Um, that. So that's gonna be pretty cool if they yeah, do this, recast this, him or I don't know, get him some proper him. training or whatever. And um, maybe Shang Chi is the you know the master of kung fu. Maybe maybe he's gonna train him. Maybe he's gonna train him. Yeah, maybe yeah you know, you're, you're not as immortal as you thought you were. <laughs> um, let me let me show you how this is done. Yeah, let's, let's um, see how this works. Yeah, so that'd be that'd be great. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm excited for it. again. Like I said, this is another one of those like they can take risk. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like like I mean, we're in four phases of this thing at this point. Like they they gotta take some risk. Anyway, just to to flesh out sort of the the, the universe that they have, because they got so many characters in general. Now, um, let me let me, let me postulate this to you: Do you think this movie takes place in the present day, or do you think it will take place ten years ago, Iron Man one, because the you know his organization is the one who kidnapped Tony Stark and started the whole you know Iron Man uh, storyline? So could this be set in the past? I think it could be it could be which would be kind of cool because then you can bring robert downey jr back in some way yes um five million dollars or <laughs> yeah yeah i mean five million dollars later but you can bring him back um also it would explain away some of the some of the plot holes in, in iron man mm-hmm. um especially iron man 3 um yeah i mean i think it, it, it would be cool i feel like it's going to be sort of cutaways if anything, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm sure they're probably gonna like do some cutaways to Iron Man one, Iron Man two, even three. Um, I mean, I, I shouldn't say I'm sure. I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure, right? Because like I like I said, it Mandarin. Makes sense. Like when you think Mandarin, you think you Iron think Man. Iron Man. Yeah. Like I'm sure they're gonna have something. They they, they like are that. Iron Man and Mandarin are as synonymous as the scrolls in Fantastic Four. Exactly. So yeah, I, one without the other. Yeah, I can see them throwing some cutaways in there, throwing some like some flashbacks or whatever. Um, him you know, working just to on say, the like, suit in the yeah, the, yeah, yeah, him working on the suit, with, you know, and and like, yeah, and then there's like, re- like sort of a or Mandarin origin story, if you will. Um, yeah, I mean, I could see it. It'd be pretty cool. Be interesting. Um, and then you might not have to pay Robert Downey Jr. that much because you could just use old footage. You got <laughs> or you just, some, some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pay him just for just for using his face, but not necessarily pay him to come act. Right. Um, just like yo, this is just here's your royalties because we use that we use that right. scene that we didn't use in Iron Man one, two, or three, right? Because I'm sure they had a lot of stuff on the cutting room floor that they could oh yeah maybe go back to. Um, and they're like yeah, like almost make it feel like a new movie mm-hmm. um so yeah i mean like I, it, it'll be cool to see it'd be interesting i mean it's all going to depend on the writers and how what direction they want to go and then i mean this is another one of those just like the eternals this is another one of those sort of vague areas where like they can take a lot of risk and they can do a lot of stuff that they can't really do with the mainstream a-list characters um where they can just like hey we're going to introduce this and this and this and then see how it goes because nobody really knows who these people are anyway Exactly. <laughs> yeah. like, if it totally bombs, well, uh, whatever. Nobody knew who they were anyway. Um, <laughs> and then from here on out, you can just like superheroes just reference them randomly, but like you never see them again. Right. Um, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, like I, I think, like I said, I think they have to take risk. Um, and if they want to keep this thing going for another, I don't know how many phases they want to go. I mean, we know for sure they're going two more for sure. They're going four and five. Um, so you gotta you gotta start bringing in some 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 new characters and also, um, you don't have to go crazy with the casting because nobody knows who these people are. So it's not like you gotta cast these A list, right? I mean, start actors and actresses because I mean, to, to, Tony Lee Young's the biggest name in here. Yeah, um, you know, I don't know anybody that knows Simu out of Kim's Convenience, and if it wasn't for that show, I wouldn't know who he is. Right. Either. Right, and Aquafina, you know, she's just known because of her crazy name. So, right. so you could just be like, "Hey, we're gonna pay you, you know, hundred fifty thousand and they're like, "Yeah," <laughs> like I'm, I'm in there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I think it's it, it, it is, and also it's a big, it's a big break role for for a lot of these, except for right. Tony. Like, it's a right. big break role. Yeah, yeah, 
and then like like I said, if it, if it if I mean it's Marvel, so it probably will do well. But um, it's a good breakout role. But then also like at the same time, it's like hey, we can save the budget for the big, you know, the big Avenger stuff and you know whatever they're gonna do, whatever new crossovers they're gonna do now, um, in replace of the Avengers or you know I mean I, I know uh they did mention that there are gonna be. Uh, there's going to be another Avengers movies, but it's going to be new Avengers. Avengers team, yeah. Um, it's going to be a new team. So, um, yeah, I mean, in the next few Avenger movies, it's like, hey, yeah, we can get these guys and not have to spend whatever the, I think Endgame was like in the million, hundreds of millions with all of that you, casting. You, in. you pay 75 to... <laughs> right, you say 75 Robert per Downey movie Jr. to Robert Downey Jr. by himself. And then... And how, how much you paid Helmsworth, how much you paid Evans, Evans, how much you had to pay Holland, how much you right. had to pay Better to Cumberbatch. Like, yeah. You know, half, that's, I think that's half the reason why some of them Mark got Ru- dusted. Um, Ruffalo, yeah. Ruffalo. Uh, some of them got dusted just because you can't afford to pay them all. We got to kill him. We got to out for half the movie because, yeah, we can't pay everybody. We can't pay all y'all. So <laughs> some of y'all getting dusted now. Some of y'all, 50% of y'all got to get dusted. But boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Chad, we, we like you, Chad, but you go got to go. We can't afford you either. Yeah, I was. that's way too much money. And to me, even though the Avengers is the big team, has been the big team in the Marvel Universe, I really would like to see some of these splinter teams, some of these smaller teams, you know, Heroes for Hire. Um, I was really hoping to see that. And then yes. Disney Plus will continue with what Netflix started. I, I want to see, you know, um, you know, I want to see Misty Knight and – Colleen Wing doing their thing because they they were both cast so well. Uh, there's just so many more places they can go um, and continue to build up these you know low level characters yeah. and now have some some prominence, which hopefully helps their their book sales. Yeah. Um, so speaking of lower level characters, continuing with the theme, we're going to transition to another show, which will release early 2021 on Disney Plus. And it has the worst name, in my opinion, <laughs> and that is WandaVision. <laughs> um, yeah, Elizabeth Olsen is returning in her role as Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch. Paul Bettany returns as the Vision, and Tanoa Paris will be playing Monica Rambeau. Nice. So, this is a huge question mark for me. I hope it's just not um, Avengers. Which one was that? Where was the one division show? Was that Avengers? Which one? Like the the romance? Yeah, where it was just like she was, you know, they were keeping her locked away. That was in Civil War. Civil War. That's what I was thinking of. Um, yeah, I just hope it's not that. He's that making her. That. I mean, he yeah, he's in J Crew making her dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is tasty. <laughs> like I, I just feel like, like I mean, the name alone, right? Like I just picture the, na- like, the, the picture name. The Wanda, name is terrible. Wanda Vision, like the name is terrible, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> it's just like a like a two and a half men sitcom with like Wanda and Vision, and it, like he's like, making her dinner, and they're just talking about love, and I don't know. Like, just, who, like, who wants, like, <laughs> like it just doesn't make sense. Like no. I mean, it was <laughs> terrible in Civil War, right? It just. It was it, it was totally, so forced. It totally ruined the flow. It was yeah. forced. Yeah. It was just annoying, and it was just like, why are we watching this? I don't really care if they're in love or not. Um, you know, it was just like, what, like, what are we doing here? And so it was just like, I mean, I don't know. And well, then it, we eventually were gonna get there, but it's like, come on, like we were just looking at them as and they they were forever calling her a kid, you right? Because because. You know her. You know her and her twin brother. Yeah, introduces you know teenagers, young kids. So all of a sudden, this kid is in love with this android, (laughs) and now man, (laughs) yeah, old man, and now they're they're there, and now wait, now he's dressing in regular clothes, and he's making her dinner, and she's eating off his fingers, and all of a sudden now they're running away together, and and then suddenly she's like. 35 and like single right yeah <laughs> like, also, like, also so she's, she goes from like 8 17 18 yeah. oh, she's 25 and and leaving her living her best life i'm like what, whoa, 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 what happened here 
like I was just like, yeah, like it, it, that was a weird thing for me too. I was like, when did she like? Because I remember when they were like, yeah, she's like a kid, and like they were trying to like play her off as like this, you know, nineteen, twenty year old or whatever. Yeah, they were just saying the Civil War. She's just a kid. Yeah, yeah, and then even in Civil War, like she's just a kid, and then like we get to uh, Black Panther, and you know, and then we get to Endgame, and she's like, all of a sudden, she's like. Hot girl summer 35. Yeah. Like, oh, we ran away together and we're, you know, we're in hiding. And like, I was just like, wait, what? Wait, when did this happen? When did she grow up? First of all. Yeah, for real. Second of all. <laughs> because like, like from from then they started treating her. It was funny too, because they started treating her like a woman. Yes. Like they like it wasn't even like everybody else was just like, you're still a kid to us. Like, I don't care what vision says. It was like all of a sudden, like she's like this grown woman, and she was just like. Like I was just like, what is going on? Like I, I'm so confused right now. Yeah, because like it's like, it's like it's like years went by from the end of Civil War to right, but then, you know, to, to to Infinity War, it's like this is this is months we're talking yeah. about here. Like she didn't go from no kid to some some because I forget how how long did the timeline they say was for, between um, Civil War and Infinity War? I think it was four years. Was it four or five years? It wasn't a long time. It wasn't a long time. It was like maybe four or five years. Because I remember I was like, dang, only... Yeah, it was four years. Yeah, remember in the beginning, they they showed... They were like four years later or whatever. And they showed like the, the destruction of the... the um... but no, but it can't be. It can't be four years. Because Peter Parker was not in, in high school for four years and still in high school. Hmm. All right, hold on. Now I got to look it up. But uh, I thought it was four years. Maybe I'm thinking... No, it was five years between Infinity War and Endgame. So it was a five-year gap between Infinity War and Endgame. Right. For both really time to try and travel. But See, huh? Between Civil War. It said two years, actually. Wow. Two years. Yeah. So she yeah, so yeah, they so had, they had less time than I thought. Yeah, they that had her going from you know, a seventeen year old <laughs> kid roughly to now you now you grown and single and you know, <laughs> ready to mingle. So, yeah, so, <laughs> Single, ready to mingle out there, like, yo, what is going on? Yeah, that was that was that was interesting. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't interesting. It was just weird. Yes, um, extremely weird. But yeah, so I'm not I'm not excited about it at all. Like when I heard it, I was like, what? Wanda. I was like, first of all, the name is terrible. The name is terrible um, because it, it's like it's a holly it's a Hollywood thing. Yeah, you know, it's 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 the you know the Tom Cat and the, you know, <laughs> the what, what was Brad 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 whatever Brad, Brad and. Brad and Bradgelina, like, come on, really? Is that where we're going? Yeah. There are people you pay how many people to come up with titles? You Wandavision is the best thing y'all can come up with. <laughs> and then the fact, like, at first I was like, okay. Well, first I was like, I saw the name and I was like, oh god. And then I was like, well, if it's a movie, maybe it won't be that bad. And then I was like, oh god, it's a TV show. Like, <laughs> like, like, no, no, I didn't like it for the 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 whatever thirty minutes or however long that was. it felt like thirty minutes. Uh, those scenes were. Um, yes. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. Just call it the Vision, the Scarlet Witch, and call it a day. Yeah. Vision, the Scarlet Witch. I mean, stop calling her Wanda all the time because when you call her Wanda all the time, you take away from her power as a Scarlet Witch, which is so impactful for the X Men universe. Treat the character properly. Well, now they can, right? I think hopefully, but not calling it WandaVision. I, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm guessing that that was all done and planned before the the deal with Fox. Uh, probably. Um, and so they were like, "Oh, too late. We can't go back now." <laughs> y'all, y'all can get back to change. I mean, I think they could have, right? Like, I mean, we should I'm, start. But we should start with the worthless petitions. Change yeah. the name of change WandaVision. <laughs> change, change it, please. I don't oh care. man! I don't care what oh, yeah, so uh, we can move on because yeah, that's gonna be terrible. Well, we, oh, there's one. We got we got one thing left <laughs> on this that we need to talk about. What's that? We got to talk about Monica Rambeau. Oh, okay. We can talk about that. So what? What? They could really hit a home run here. Or they could drop the ball and piss a whole lot of people off too. Because if they, I don't know what time frame this is gonna be set in. If it's present day, what are you doing with Monica? Is she Spectrum? Hmm. If it's, you know, some, who knows what, if they end up getting shucked in the past or who knows what, you know, so maybe if this is set in like, 
I don't know. I don't know what it could be said in. Um, I think it should be set in the present. But if it's set in present day, then she's going to be Spectrum. So is she going to is she going to repair Vision, who's a Hulk of an android? Um, are they going to allude to the fact that uh, you know she, she was Captain Marvel prior to Carol? Like, what are they, what are they, are they going to do, Monica? Proper respect. Well, that's the question, right? But I think I think they should do it, right? So, like, you can you can explain. I mean, it's a TV show, so you can explain that over seasons, really, right? Yes. Like, I mean, none of these are going. to I mean, they're they're announcing them as you know one season right now, but I'll, we're all sure that they're probably going to go for multiple seasons. So, like, you can explain that whole story of how she was Mar- Captain Marvel before Carol Danvers and then how she became Spectrum and then the whole like, you know, her repairing vision because, you know, now the Infinity Stones are sort of, you know. They're gone. They're gone. Yeah. And so it was like, you know, bringing him back and all that stuff. So um, I think it'll be, it'll be, it'll be a smart move because you got a lot of material to work with and you can span that across multiple seasons, which that, just keeps the story going, right? That, that, yeah, that's you can take that time. Keep, that would keep somebody coming back. You can also do it right. You can do it justice because you don't yes. you don't have two and a half hours or whatever. You know, I mean, the average movie. Well, now I mean, oh, Marvel, average movie is an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like you know, even the long ones, <laughs> or just about two hours. Yeah, yeah, two hours. So you like you have more than that, right? Because that's just two episodes, give or take. Um, so you can explain that across multiple episodes, multiple seasons, and just like keep people coming back. Like uh, I want to know what's going on. Yeah. You know? Um. And then especially if you're keeping your, I mean, clearly their their goal is to keep all the TV shows in continuity with the, with the movies. Um, that's why they're casting the same people. Um, it's an easy setup to bring Spectrum into the Marvel universe now as a and on a cinematic role. Um, like it's easy. You can just kind of pop her in anywhere at that point because it's like, well, if you're keeping along with the show, <laughs> like, oh, their spectrum just showed up, like you know, like just randomly in I don't know any movie really. Um, exactly. so yeah, I mean, I think I think Marvel hasn't necessarily let me down. Uh, I've been disappointed with some movies and stuff like that, but overall, the character development and stuff like that has been great. So I don't see why they would drop the ball on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think I think it could work out well, especially like I said, with it being multiple seasons, with it being multiple episodes, like you could take your time, and then you can also bring get different writers. Like there's so much you can do with it that you can't do with movies. That like this, as much as like Disney Plus is sort of like pissing me off because like I'm like, Dad, this is something else that I gotta pay for. Um, <laughs> I'm not mad at her. I'm not mad at it at all. Um, you know, it's like, it's like, yo, like you guys can do so much with this, and I'm not mad at that, right? Like, because the best we got on TV was the ABC series, which, like we talked about earlier, you can't do much with the with the A name characters and and stuff like that because of the timelines. But also, like Netflix wasn't. I mean, it was great but they were all kind of B level and they, they never really referenced them in the movies. And it, it didn't have that, that flow that has established these movies and made them so great. Right. Um, so now it's like, you can do that. And like, you, you know, it's like, Oh man, I could watch every day. I mean, not that I want to watch Wanda and vision every day, on, <laughs> but like, I have that, you know, I have the access to that. Right. Like I could watch uh, Cap. Um, I was about to say Captain America, Falcon and Falcon. Bucky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he is Captain America now, but uh, you know, I could watch Falcon and Bucky like consistently now, right? Across multiple seasons, multiple episodes, and it's the same Captain Captain America. Uh, I keep saying Captain America, Falcon Captain, and Bucky. Yes, um, you know that I watched for the last ten years in the movies. Well, not ten years, but the last you know five or six time. Years, yeah, exactly. You know, um, in the movies, and it's like. Uh, keep that same flow keep the same sort of um personalities and like you know they're playing the same character so you don't lose that like ah this guy sucks right right it's like oh it's the same guy yeah it's got the same attitude same corny joke same whatever right um, and it keeps and they, they have the same chemistry yeah yeah yeah. 
So it's like, I, I, I like that. I like that opportunity that they have. Again, I'm not crazy about Wanda and Vision as a right. TV show, but I mean, if, but if maybe, they but, do that, that'd but be maybe cool. this would give them time to actually explore the romance that was not able to be done on screen. That's true. And then you can also, you can build in, you can start to bring in, you can introduce mutants, the you know, now as a thing. You can talk about mutants more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because now they can actually say the word mutants instead of meta unit humans and oh, God, I hate the whole meta human. I hated that too. But I mean I get why they had to do it. I yeah. mean legally and all that. But like, you know, you can start to say like, yo, like like sort of like Agents of Shield did, like it introduced that, like, hey, there's more superheroes out there than just the big, you know, big whatever six or whatever, how many right. there's um there's all these like villains and low level villains and and stuff like that. So um I think okay, it gives well, them that freedom. Well speaking of villains we're going to go into another show, which will also be coming out early 2021 on Disney Plus, and that is Loki. So Tom Hiddleston will be reprising his role as Loki in his own singular show. So if you're wondering how that could be possible, well, and spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen Endgame, which doesn't <laughs> make any sense, uh, Loki was able to get his hands on the Tesseract when the Avengers went back in time to try to get it themselves and was able to escape. So Loki is not dead in that version of the uh, universe again. or yep. it's, Again, more multiverse stuff. So Hiddleston will be starring, and that's the only person we know as far as on the cast, of this Loki standalone series on Disney Plus. Um, this, this is this is another one where it's like so much yeah. can, can happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can go back to Asgard and kind of see what uh, Valkyrie's up to now as the new, you know, temporary Thor because we know that she's not going to be the actual Thor. Well, they're doing what they did in the books as far as new Asgard being built on Earth. So right. I'm thinking he may be there causing trouble or he may just be going through the stars with the Tesseract and causing Yeah, I mean, there's a lot you can do, right? Because, I mean, for one thing, right? So, like, this Loki is going to be the 2014 Loki, not the 2019 Loki. So he hasn't experienced... He hasn't reformed. Right. So he's still the old Loki. Um, So it could be, yeah, to your point, like, he could be in you know, trying to just basically screw up everything in New Asgard um, and just like, or he could be chasing after Thor and, you know, in the, the new Guardians of the, the Galaxy. Guardians, yeah. <laughs> um, the Asgardians. The Asgardians of the Galaxy. Of the Galaxy. The Galaxy. Um, you know, so he could be kind of like doing that. And I mean, there's there's a lot of different ways you can go with this one. Um, so it, it'd be cool. I think, it, I think it'd be cool. I liked him as Loki. I think he was one of... I mean, other than Michael B. Jordan. Um, well, those, they, I'm hearing that they may bring him back, too. Which would be cool. I wanted, I, I was so mad when he died. But anyway. Oh, um, please. You know, all they had to do was put a Kamoyo <laughs> bean in that right. <laughs> you know I mean? like, Come on. All, all that vibranium, he's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, just in animation somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he's not dead. Um, yeah. If they brought Bucky back with the one arm and all that, they, they can bring him back. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, I was like, really? Like, he was one of the best villains we had in a long time. Um, and it sucks because, like, he, like, the difference with Loki was Loki was able to span multiple movies. Mm-hmm. Like, but he was a great villain. Oh, yeah. All the other ones is like one and done. You know, you look at all the, the past Marvel movies, all the villains are one and done. Some are Bucky. Too, too much one and done. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I really would have liked to see him. I mean, if he does come back, that'd be great. But um, that's another topic for another day. Um, But yeah, I mean, he's one of the best villains. And I actually enjoyed just kind of watching the Loki show in, in, uh, which which store was it? I think it was the second. Was it the first one? I don't know. Where He he was like, he had a lot of screen time. Um, Uh, Dark World? Yeah. 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 He had a lot of screen time. And I didn't, I didn't mind it. You know what I mean? Like, like sometimes you watch these movies and you're just like, oh god, like come on, like just get to the, get to the action, get to the, get to the superhero, get to the save the day. Let's let's mm-hmm. move on. But like, I actually enjoy watching him 
you know, and it was it was sort of the Loki show, you know, for a lot of th- uh, of um, Dark World. So it was like it was cool. Like it didn't I didn't it didn't mess up the flow at all. Like it was like no, this guy's good um, as an actor, and then as, also as a villain. Like he he plays a really good villain, and the oh, yeah. fact that they were able to sort of like bring back that 2014 Loki is like this is like perfect because you can. You can cause all sorts of trouble before he gets reformed again. Right. You know, even if you want to go that way. Or he can never get reformed, right? And he should always be the villain. He should always be the villain to me. You know? That's just me, but... And I, yeah, and I think, because I think that's what sort of killed the character when well, he The fan service. The fans right? and the women are like, oh, Loki! Oh, <laughs> right, right. Loki. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's he's the bad guy. Let's get yeah, him the bad he, guy. Yeah, he needs to stay the bad guy. So I think that, I think, like, again, this is one of those things, like, you can go out stretch out as long as you want and um you know as long as you can afford him <laughs> pretty much and uh, i think he'll play a, a great villain um and continue to stay a, a good hopefully he continues to stay a villain um throughout all this so yeah most definitely that's my thoughts on it but um Ooh. so from low key we go back into the film world where we will see dr strange in the Multiverse of Madness, release date May 7th, 2021, where we will see Benedict Cumberbatch reprise his role as Dr. Stephen Strange, Benedict Wong reprise his role as Wong, Rachel McAdams reprise her role as Dr. Christine Palmer, and Elizabeth Olsen will reprise her role as Wanda Maximoff's Scarlet Witch, and this will be directed by Scott Derrickson. So here's the, the first true curveball that they are throwing to us as far as where we are going to be seeing the Scarlet Witch um, <clears throat> and her connect- and her working with Doctor Strange. And they also stated that this will be Marvel's first quote-unquote horror movie, hmm. uh, despite still maintaining the PG-13 uh, rating. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I love... Doctor Strange, the first one was. It was good. It was perfect. It was a good I mean, solid film. A good solid. For, for 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 Doctor Strange, I mean, I think I don't I don't see anything that I would have taken out. I mean, obviously they stayed really close to the source material with how mm-hmm. he, you know, got his powers and and you know the car accident and the whole thing. Were um, you even the scene in the hospital with him? Yeah. Guiding him with her his avatar. Yeah, it was like perfect to like to the T like. I mean, if you've read any of the books or even watched any of the, the animated stuff, like you're like, this is great. This is like they literally just took it off the page and put it on the screen. Right. So um that was great. The villains were I mean the villains were, were okay. Um they weren't like it was it, it wasn't about it was, more, it was more about his development and his origin yeah. story, which I like it fit. Um so going with the next one, I think it's gonna be good. I, I don't see I mean, obviously, we're going to introduce the the real multiverse. At least, I mean, that would be stupid. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be stupid if they didn't, right? Like, yes. Why would you even put it in the name? But then I don't know. That's that's also Marvel. Like, everybody gotcha. Um, but uh, yeah. So I mean, the uh, literally the possibilities are infinite once you start introducing the multiverse, um, with where you can go and who who you can throw in there and what kind of you know direction the movie's gonna go in it's interesting that they call it a horror story um, yeah i don't know where i can you know i don't know exactly how that can go but i mean it is dr strange and it is always some weird sort of like um oh there's always you know they didn't do it a whole lot in the films which i thought was very smart um yeah. because growing up as a kid um I didn't read a whole bunch of Doctor Strange because there was a whole lot of occult tie-ins yeah. in the stories and stuff. So they were very smart in not having that in the first film. Right. They, they go to a whole bunch of that in this film. Maybe that's why they're going with the whole horror go realm there. Yeah. Or maybe just, and, and it could be just a curve. They could be just be trying to misdirect us um, by just the horrors of experience in the multiverse. Like there's there's so many different what ways horror could be yeah because i mean even like sort of that end scene right where he was like he was like stuck in that infinite loop oh the, the time loop yes yeah that the was Robert i mean was that was to bargain yeah yeah that was sort of a 
it, it, a horror story in itself. You know what I mean? Like when you start like how he was like like the different ways he was getting killed and uh, you know, and then like start all over again. Start over again. So um, that was a horror for drama because he just kept, kept on. Yeah, yeah. Kept and on coming like, back. Okay, I yeah. killed him. Oh, he's back. <laughs> Kill him again. <laughs> But even like just like the, the the sort of surroundings, how it, it progressively got darker every time he would come back, and like just the whole way, every it was like, oh, I'm killing this way this time, and all that. So it was, um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's Disney, and so like horror for Disney is, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not horror as we know it, right? Um, so I mean, it could be one of those things, like you said, where it's just like the strangeness and the you know sort of like the occult tie-ins and different things of 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 that is dr strange um just sort of like it's a horror film so don't bring your kids right um but you know in the, in the sense of we know horror like you know um it's probably not even going to be a big thing that. yeah it's, right. i'm sure there's not going to be like jump scares and stuff like that in there it's more i would i'm guessing it's probably going to be more of a thriller if anything mm-hmm. than a horror but you know Again, who knows? I mean, it'd be really out of Disney's wheelhouse if they did go like straight horror. Yeah, it would, <laughs> yeah, just why I, just, I can't see it because it's like yeah. uh, they just that's just not right. And then it's like, why introduce it? And, I mean, how do you turn the character that kids, you know, kids have fallen in love with? Some kids have fallen in love with this character now. Yes. And how do you turn that to like, well? No, we you can't go see that one, Johnny, because yeah, it's too because scary it's for you. Scary. <laughs> like, I mean, you're gonna lose a lot of kids and even parents because they're like, well, we were gonna see it, but no, you know what I mean? Like, right. I mean, I don't know. Parents these days are different too, because like I remember when um, when uh, Deadpool came out, and my wife was like, she teaches second grade, and she's like. I went to school and all the kids are talking about Deadpool. And I'm like, why did your parents let you go see this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but. And there was all, like, growing up, there was only like one or two of, of those kids I knew whose parents would have watched radar movies. Yeah. Nowadays, all these kids. Yeah, are, like all yeah, the kids. Like, and I'm like, yeah, like she's like, yeah, like, yeah, like, oh, it's like a whole classroom discussion. I'm like, wow. But, um, and these are second graders at that. Like, they're yeah. Like, Seven, right? Like, like, yeah, but uh, like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's not that's not going down. Like, yeah, when you, you know, when it was 13, 14, like, yeah, I saw a lot of radar movies and I was like around that age, but when I was seven, not too many, one yeah. or two here and there. My, my parents are pretty lenient too, you know, compared to my friends, so that that helped. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not buying the whole horror story thing. Um, yeah, it's definitely not gonna be American horror story, like yeah, yeah, it's not gonna be anything gonna like, be that. like that. Um, yeah, I can see it being more like a, I don't know, maybe like a Handmaid's, Handmaid's Tales it sort of like horror movie. thing, where it's just like, it's more of a thriller. It's more of like just that that anticipation and that suspense of, you know, what's going to happen. And like you said, like, he's stuck in the multiverse and like the whole, because I mean, to some people that could be horrifying, right? Like, I remember watching some of the Doctor Strange cartoons and I'm like, this is weird. Yes. Right? And then like, they, it, to the right person, it could inflict some sorts of terror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fear. Um, but you know, um, you know, I remember some of the stuff that he was going like in the cartoons, like him going through, um, that were terrifying for him as an individual. So I could see how that could people could latch onto that. Um, and so you have to classify it that way for you know, um, M- MPAA standards and all that. Right. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't buy it as being like like an American Horror Story or something like terrifying. Right. Um. Yeah. So I don't. Know. Yeah. I mean, I, I like I, I like Doctor Strange. So I, I, I love Ben Benedict Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> like Sherlock was one of my favorites. That was oh, Sherlock is dope. Yeah. My name. Is rocking Mr. Magic. He is unique DNA. And this is the original Jeep Podcast.